Hello everybody, I am Brad Ellis. Welcome to Frame Trap, your bi-weekly in-depth gaming discussion podcast. This episode we got Daniel Blowerth. Yep. Michael Huber. Saying our wild hearts. Yes. Do you and see their new game that they're they're what? talking about like what? you can play one handed? What? Yeah, Lorelei and the Laser Eyes. Sign me up. So, so you can do one hand. You can have the Joy-Con, and the other hand, you can write your your puzzle solutions. Day one. Day one. (laughs) And the co-host Michael Damiani is back in Texas. He's here. Yo. Or Robo Damiani. How's it going? What's up, Damiani? Good to see you again. How you feeling in your new place? Y'all settled in? Uh, It's pretty good so far. Um, It's kind of like nice. Having your own place again, you know, oh, having yeah. roommates, pretty nice. But uh, <laughs> it's been windy as shit out the last like two days, and the hallway for my apartment complex—it's outdoors. It's like a wind tunnel, man. It's like the movie effect howling noise from like a horror film, dude. I was like, what the <laughs> hell is that noise? <laughs> it's freaking me out. I never heard anything. I was like, like that before. I was like, shit. That is hilarious. <laughs> Um, yeah. that what's funny about that is I think the Dallas Winds is actually like a musical <laughs> group. The Dallas Winds. Of uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, musicians. It's a pretty good name. Uh, we got lots of great games to talk about this episode. Lots of good stuff. Before we get into it, we just got a quick word from Daniel Bloodworth. Yeah, uh, this is this is going to be from a written thing. If it sounds a little bit stilted, sorry. <laughs> I just wanted. To, I took time to write out what I wanted to say, uh, and we had a lot of discussions and talked about this. Uh, but yeah, I know it's been a little a little bit, uh, but I want to make things right uh, regarding uh, Dustin Furman after the appearance on Frame Trap a few weeks ago. Uh, Dustin's one of Brad's closest friends. He's been a longtime member of our community. Uh, Dustin didn't do anything wrong. We never thought Dustin did anything wrong. Uh, I screwed up uh, due to a breakdown of internal communication and conflicting concerns. I left Dustin feeling like he wasn't welcome back at Easy Allies, uh, which was not a conclusion that we had fully discussed as a team. Uh, I've been wrestling uh, with this issue every day for weeks since it's happened, just trying to find the best path forward. Uh, And throughout this time, I've been listening to all of your feedback. Um, I know that, uh, you know, I understand some of you have concerns about us having anything to do with Last Stand Media. I also know that there's a lot of people in our community who regularly listen to their shows and our shows both. Uh, There's no wall separating our communities. And like Dustin, uh, a lot of people have been both a part of both communities for many years. Uh, Some of the people that left are like some of the kindest, most caring people we've ever had in this community. Uh, so yeah, definitely, definitely stings to, uh, to see some of those exit surveys and stuff. Uh, but, uh, for some people I know, like those differences are personal. It's hard to reconcile that, uh, but we can't attack one another, uh, because someone might have different feelings about a different podcast. Uh, so I want to treat one another right as people first and foremost, and I want easy allies to be a welcoming place for good people that will be a benefit to our community. Uh, some of you are worried. I know that uh, troublemakers are going to come along, uh, but you know those are people that are going to be in every community. They're going to find us, whether it's from a guest appearance or from YouTube comments or from Twitch or Metacritic. Uh, so yeah, we're going to you know continue to watch out for that kind of thing no matter what. Uh, it's, we're going to stand against hate and abuse. We're going to moderate when necessary, as we always have. But yeah, like all these personal differences uh, are and concerns are why it took some time to consider uh, what we should do, whether we should invite Dustin back in the future. Uh, there's no perfect answer or right answer, but I can't help but feel there's something wrong with preventing two close friends from talking about what games they're playing on each other's shows when, by all accounts, Dustin seems like a pretty cool dude. And like we've, we've had some chats with him through all of this. Uh, and I just want us to care more about people than about brands. Uh, so if you don't want to listen to Last Stand Media for any reason, of course, that's up to you. Uh, no one's forcing you to do that. Uh, but if uh, Dustin and Brad want to be on each other's shows in the future, they're free to do so. And I hope that we can welcome Dustin back to the Easy Allies community with open arms because he's a good dude and he's been one of us for a long time. And that's what I got to say to close that. All right. Thank you, Bloodworth. All right. It's time now to talk about video games, what yeah. we've been playing. We're going to start with Michael Damiani. Mm-hmm. You've been playing a lot of Super Mario RPG, the remake that oh, just shit. came out. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about Damiani. Oh, yeah. I just want to say real quick. Man. 
Damiani. Oh. I remember oh. back in the day when we were talking about this game at some point, I was like, yeah, like, I was disappointed when it first came out because I, like, beat it in one day. And everybody was shocked. It was like, no way, dude. But, like, your playthrough is, like, 15 hours. <laughs> and you, like, 100%ed it in that playthrough. Yeah, I think it, it it's not... Oh, I, It depends on if you go, like, what you're trying to get out of it. But a lot of people were saying that their first time playing through Super Mario RPG, or whether it was the Switch version or the original Super Nintendo version, um, like, playing it, like, even 15 hours in one day is a lot. So, yeah. I mean... Playing it over a few days. And also, some people don't only play like two, three hours. So, I could totally see why, you know, some people may have disbelieved, you know, didn't believe you on that, blood. But I was 16. I believe you. Like, I was like, no, yeah. <laughs> I was like, all in. <laughs> yeah. It, it's doable. It's definitely doable. Probably not recommended, but yeah. Um, not that Super game RPG. To be in this one night. Oh. No. Yeah, <laughs> Huber, funny thing, when it was announced and I was like, r I was rushing to our calendar, production calendar to put in full playthrough, like Friday night. I'm like, oh, we're just gonna do this on Friday. I'm like, wait a second. No, isn't this longer than I remember? I thought it was like five hours. And I'm like, wait, I don't think it's five hours. Let me yeah. I'm like, no, it's like 15 hours. No, no, no. We're gonna we're gonna need to spread that out over a little bit more. So yeah. no best game to beat in one night. No single night playthrough spread over a few sessions mm -hmm. um yeah I, I was very excited about the announcement of this game because we've had a ton of remasters enhanced ports stuff like that on top of really big remakes like, like final fantasy 7 remake and and stuff in that direction where it throws you for a loop or it's just the original game with the original visuals just like up res or made prettier i mean not to say that's you know a lot of effort but like metroid prime remaster they did do a lot of work on that but that i would say this is that in between a little bit or where it's like visually this is like the shadow of the colossus i think more in that direction where it's like you completely overhauled the visuals yeah it it, it still looks like the same game but man it is a good not just a new coat of paint it's like you, you you just like brought in a new like you know model car as well and like you upgraded it baby this looks so much better performs well we'll talk about performance but like metaphorically performs better oh, <laughs> no there's some switch there's oh. some switchiness to oh, it oh no <laughs> which was a little i was a little surprised that there were any kind of performance just like little stutters kind of with this type of game yeah, there's like, what do we call it? micro stuttering. It's not as bad as, say, Link's Awakening, okay. the 2019 Switch uh, version. Yeah, because that, but that definitely bugged happening me, but I got certain over points it. Yeah. Very frequently. yeah, it was just because this game, like, just like Link's Awakening, you're looking at like, a single screen, and it, like, it scrolls over, and there is a point where you hit an edge, whereas in this, it's literally sm like small little zones interconnected. There's no like g giant environments in this game whatsoever. And it's locked in an isometric view. Although they do have cutscenes where the camera will freely move in that isometric uh, environment hmm. and then be like, oh, you it, it is accounting for the camera could move around uh, theoretically. But for the most part, it is locked. So. Anytime it was happening, it, it happens around like the Bowser's Castle keep quite a bit, um, especially in, in, in cutscenes. So I don't know. It was a little surprising. But anyway, yes, there were some minor performance issues, which, you know, it's laid into the Switch's lifespan, but I didn't think this game was going to really cause anything like that. So that was the first surprise. The other thing, um, let's get let's get the negatives out of the way real quick before we get into any of the, like the, the huge amount of positives. Um, here it comes. Isometric, isometric platforming. <laughs> isometric platforming. I must have like cursed that phrase a hundred times during my playthrough. Because it's not the isometric view that's an issue with me. It's that when you're platforming, yeah. you're like, use your shadows. And like, I was like, this sucks. I was like, there, there, there's some parts where it, like, the vine parts yeah, going Yeah, I was just about to say land. the beanstalks. Always. Oh, yeah. my God. That, like... This was an opportunity to add some quality of life to make that feel a little bit easier, and it like it really needed it in my opinion. Um, but you are getting the authentic like old school experience. Like yeah. it was not as it was not good back in the day, and it's still not good now. So did you get you, to experience that frustration. Did you use the the D pad or the analog stick, and did you find? I tried both. Okay. 
Um, for general movement, the D-pad. Um, for some of the movements, like when platforming, I went with the analog. But generally, I was leaning on the D-pad a little bit more, for sure. Right. Because I remember... Like going back to the NES, like that's why I wanted the, the NES Max because you remember it had like the circular thing with the angles, and I always oh, yeah, thought that, that thing, would make yeah. like isometric games like that easier. But it was like, no, that's not how it works. It's like they were still programmed with four directions. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. most of the time, you didn't so, have uh, that eight-way movement as an option, really. Yeah. But yeah, like, and that, that like that's the second real criticism, and then like the last one kind of like ties a little bit into it is just that. For better or worse, this is there. There are some revisions, additions, but on, on the wholesale, it is pretty much a one-to-one -one faithful adaptation. For better or worse, mm -hmm. um, some of the mini game segments um, they're meant to be fun. A few of them are frustrating because they just you know maybe they weren't as good as I remember. Like the the mode seven part of the mine uh, the minecart section. Mm. Wasn't as like, I was like, ah, oh, this kind of stinks. But then like the side scrolling part, I was like, oh, this is more like Donkey Kong. I like this. This is like much more fun, more palpable for me. Um, the other one was like the beetle, the race up booster hill one where you have to like bounce off the sniff its heads and the barrels to catch up to booster. Right. Again, it's an isometric angle or so, you know, so it's a little what the heck. But otherwise, the other ones, I think, you know, held up just fun. They, they were fine. Um, so they, they kept them all in there, but yeah, those are like the three kind of like criticisms, um, that I had for it, um, that I would have liked to see maybe like, you know, just more quality of life improvements. That being said, uh, I do think for the most part, this game still holds up. It's still fun to play that new, the new versions of the music arrangements are fantastic. Um, man, they did a really good job with those shout out, uh, Yoko Shimamura shout out. Um, and you could instantly toggle to the Super Nintendo version if you want. So, you know, hmm. great that they added that. That's sweet. Um, they added, they added um, like, little helper uh, icons for the timed attacks. Oh, okay. um, It's like an exclamation mark that will show you the window you're supposed to hit your your input to get, like, that bonus yeah. e extra effect. Yeah, there's and some, as you some do options better, those will go stars away. for that, too. That's that's really good. I think it's a really good way to handle it because as you learn it, it's there, and as you get good at it, it goes away. Like the training wheels come off. Oh, okay. But if you start to stumble a bit and falter, it will bring it back again. Like, oh, did you like kind of forget the timing? Hmm. And every time you equip a new weapon, it knows that's what's up. So it's slightly different timing for every attack with a new weapon. I kind of appreciated that. Also, those uh, that fills up your gauge as you. Um, there's two layers. There's that new gauge meter that is the triple action, mm -hmm. the triple attack. And when you fill up to 100%, you can execute a triple attack. And depending on who's your, in your party, it'll trigger a special effect. Sometimes it's an offensive attack. Like one's just like a big repetitive attack to a single enemy. One unleashes a bunch of AoEs of elemental damage on everyone. Others are more defensive or support. Like Peach will do like a, a he, like an ultra heal, basically. They'll top everyone off nice. and revive everybody if they're down. Or one of them will give you just like a giant shield that like the next attack will not do anything to you. So if you can time it against like a big boss attack, like their biggest attack, throw that up, no damage, mitigate it. So nice to have that. Uh, Dominic, talk to me about these like new post game things they added, like the boss. Yeah, rush I heard thing. there's like more bosses. Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Does Sora sure. show up? Can I, real, no. <laughs> no, there is no Sora. Uh, real quick, the the uh, sorry, I said there were two layers to that. The other oh, is yeah. there's chain attacks now. So those timed inputs for offensive and defensive capabilities, as long as you uh, as you maintain those, you'll see a chain counter going up. Okay. That improves your overall offense. Your attacks will do more damage the higher that chain gets. Oh, cool. So when you get in, like, into the 20s and 30s, you will start rolling over people. But any little mistake, like, oops, slightly missed input, you go back down to nothing. Mm -hmm. You start back over. So it's They're kind of a fun game to keep that going. Yeah. That reminds me a little bit of, and like people are going to hate this because I never finished the game and I still need to. The Mother 3 battle system was all about hitting uh, to the rhythm of uh, each song. <coughs> and it's like, so it's like you did an attack and like you'd have like a base damage, but then if you kept up with the rhythm, then you kept getting like these little extra chip damages on it until you like fell out of the rhythm up to like 16 hits or something okay. like that. Yeah. Yeah. This is so sort of similar, but not quite. 
Uh, and like it's really good to hold, like maintain that and hold on to like a full gauge going into like a boss fight because you can just like open with a ton of damage. It's really nice. Um, uh, real quick, dopamine because I saw chat mention it. <laughs> and don't thank you for not letting me forget chat. When you level up in this game, you do have that choice again about magic, health, or physical attack. Which one you want to like level up? But the screen, you have all your companions with you, and they start doing like a little dance with you when like they, you level up. So like you're celebrating, and they're just like doing a little like slide dance. Bowser next to doing you. a little slide when you have, like, dance. Everyone on, dude. Bowser's pose. He's like the the movie poster pose with his arms crossed, and he's like just staring at you too cool. And then he kind of like shuffles a little bit when it's his turn to dance. It's like pretty good. Uh, yeah, those those new cutscenes are really good too. Like the the fully animated, but one weird thing, except for Bowser, shout out to Bowser for giving him his grunts and his like you know snorts and stuff. Everyone else is like silent. No, like I know they're not going to speak and do full VO, right. but like no grunts or sound effects. Mm. It's a little weird for that. Mm. Yeah. Um, mm. Dominic, you talked about them adding like new moves, like the chain attacks and the triple attack, like that. Did they rebalance the game? Do you think to take that in consideration? I don't think so because overall the game is much easier okay. than I remember. Uh, I was getting to bosses and like, oh, I remember this as a kid. This one gave me trouble. And like, oh, I just obliterated it. So I, I do think they did not take that into full consideration. However, good segue here, Brad. You asked earlier about the post game content. The post game boss, uh, second uh, attempts of the bosses, does take that stuff into account. Okay. You'll be very pleased because most of these fights, you don't fight every single boss again. What it is is a quest line you unlock where you talk to, he's now Frog Sage, by the way. He's not Frog Fuchsius anymore. It's Frog Sage. Um, there's some localization changes. Like uh, Mac is now Claymorton, the first like sword boss oh, okay. in the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, Frog Mac. Sage will give you a... Yeah. <laughs> Frog Sage will give you a clue about which boss to go check out. So, like, the first one, I believe, is Punchinello, uh, the bomb-tossing guy in the Moleville Caves. Um, what each of these bosses are is a puzzle battle. Like, there's a gimmick to it. So, you can't out-level them, basically. You can't just, like, raw damage beat them. So, for Punchinello, I mean, I'm going to, like, sorry. I'm giving a little bit of a spoiler on just this one as an example. Yeah. He throws out bombs. And in the normal version, you just destroy the bombs and fight him. But you don't do that this time because when you do any kind of attack to Punchinello directly from you, it does like one HP of damage. No matter how OP you are, you can't do more than like a few hits of damage to him. He's got thousand, like a thousand HP or something, or like close to a thousand HP. What you have to do is you have to hit the bombs that he throws out to turn them around because each time you hit them, they change direction where they're facing. And when they go off, they'll, they'll if they're facing towards him, they'll hit him and they'll do all the damage. So you basically gotta you gotta manage that essentially. You gotta manage the bombs and make sure they're facing the right way. And that was like one of the easier ones to to, to do. Like a lot of them involve some trial and error of like, man, what the heck am I doing wrong? So they're more of like a brain puzzle. Um, it, it's less about execution and more about how do you do that? I, I love someone chats and they brute force that fight. Oh, okay. I love how Nintendo <laughs> has been so good about that. About like their main game is like pretty chill, easy to get through mostly, but then the post game and the extra stuff, if you want to commit, mm-hmm. is like really challenging. So I, I love how they they've been doing that. Yeah. All right. I, I I have to, I have to say this because we're, we're we're not doing a damn uh, damn uh, we're not doing a spoiler mode for this game. This is gonna be the only place I could talk about it. So. Tune out for like 30 seconds. I'll be really fast. I'm going to put my hand up like this. Which means <laughs> it's not going to work wait for, for audio a second, listeners, but yeah. And for audio listeners, I'm going to say, go away, come back in 30 seconds. All right, the Culex fight is still in here. It's fucking sick. And there's a bonus version of it when you do all the bosses. He's in fucking 3D, dude. And oh. it, like the, the, the storyline behind it is it's the most satisfying thing. Like that, that bit, raised yeah. me to new heights. I was like, I was clapping. I, like they, they did new music for it. Hell yeah, it was so good. All right, audio listeners, come back. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sure. I mean, whatever. Sure. That's not like a spoiler for the plot of the game, I guess. Yeah. Uh, speaking, that was like fantastic. Yeah. Speaking of the plot, Damiani, I remember I played through this game a couple of years ago, and I did enjoy the story and how goofy it is. Does all that hold up pretty well? 
<laughs> yeah, I think it does still does a pretty good job with the the writing and the humor. Um, it is a little bit more slapstick. Um, they still keep those quirky animations, like Mario. Like I'm about to walk away from conversation. One more thing, I trip, fall over, haha, funny, or someone is, you know, it, it's very slapstick like that. Sorry. And I do think like the some of the best parts are you see like a different side of Bowser. Mm-hmm. The one of the most touching things in this game is Bowser's trying to reclaim his keep. He lost his keep. When Smithy came crashing down, he's been, you know, kind of, you know, he's he's out of his house. He can't he, you know, he's trying to find a way back. But he's also trying to like keep up his like reputation, his image. Every time he sees Mario, he's like, no, I gotta be cool and stuff. <laughs> but eventually he learns to like kind of like show his emotions. And like as he meets some of his former minions, he's like you know what? It's okay. You found a new life over here. You don't have to come back with me. I'm not going to force you to come back and be like one of my minions. Like you see like a sensitive side of Bowser, which is kind of nice. And I was like, Fuck you yeah. know what? You don't really get to see Bowser have character development like this. You know, pretty good. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Uh, visually, Damiani, from what I've seen, the game seems like it translated super well into this new style. Like obviously, <laughs> like when you look at Mario, yeah. he's like much more stubby compared to like how we normally see Mario, but I think that fits really well with the original game. Yeah. Do you think that carries over throughout the whole game? Were you ever like not impressed with anything visually? Oh, no. Like other than like the small, like, you know, performance hiccups here and there, like the actual like fidelity was like, you know, it, it, it was just how I wanted it to look. I mean, the trailer convinced me from, you know, the get go. That this is like, oh man, this is how I'd love this to look. And seeing it in action, yeah, it looks great. It's one of the most distinct looking games because of its style and its visuals. And they really haven't made a game like this since, which is, you know, a little bit unfortunate. So hopefully, you know, people see this, they play it, they check it out, they like it, and they see the visuals and ask for maybe more of the style of Mario because we've gotten Paper Marios, we've gotten Mario and Luigi <laughs> games, but we never really got a full follow-up to Super Mario RPG. Yeah. Do you, would you like Square to do it since they did the original? Or a lot of the original? I mean, it. I would love for it to be a collaboration. It was very so very satisfying to see their names in the credits, seeing uh, seeing uh, some familiar faces mm-hmm. in there. Nomura in the credits, baby. That's right. I was like, that's right. Character design. There you go. <laughs> that's right, dude. <laughs> There's your no Gino Sora, cover. Though. Yeah. I was gonna say, yeah, Gino for sure. <laughs> there were no there were no Keyblades. Uh, uh, I like 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 cameo stuff is still in there. If you're familiar with that stuff, it's still in oh there. It's okay. Still present. Um, and like, I, I think it was fantastic. Like they added extra, like all the extra stuff. I mean, they added like a journal that shows you like recap of each, like kind of like story beats oh, in cool. case you forgot. There's like a the bestiary. So you can go through that. You can uh, see like all the enemies. Yeah. I, um, I, I heard can, there's like, like, like a lot of cool little descriptions for like flavor text for the oh. enemies when you look at them and mm. examine them. Mm. Yes. So the very beginning of the game, when you fight the hammer brother, mysteriously he turns into two. They, like, have flavored dialogue about, wait, wasn't there just one? And now there's two? How did that happen? Oh, okay. <laughs> like, they have fun. Like, they definitely have fun with a lot of that that text and that explanation and that uh, a lot of that exposition. So, I mean, it's, yeah, th- this is a game, I think, it's not very long. I, I hear people are coming into my stream and being like, oh, this is cool. Like, how long is it? It's like 30, 40. I'm like, no, it's like 15, maybe 20 at the most. And they're like, oh, cool, short RPG. That's awesome. So I, I do think that uh, that really helps its case a lot, being on the shorter side. And it, it, it feels great for its length. Like, I mean, you can maybe ask for a little bit more, you know, if they ever make a follow-up. But, man, this, you know, it just feels, like, really well put together. And there's so many hidden secrets. There's a lot of optional content. Dude, Huber, shout out to this Huber. 30 freaking years. I didn't know there's a casino in this game. Yo. That's so funny. There's a casino. That's so funny. To, I, was like, I was there. What? I was watching you when you discovered that. And it was like, really? You what didn't can, know? What kind of game? That's games? so funny. I didn't games? know there was a casino. Well, apparently they, Although they when changed you get in there, the ESRB made them change it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's no. They used to have blackjack and oh. like roulette, but they changed them to other games now. It's like a memory so game. Games a of memory chance. game that yeah. Damiani was like screenshotting. <laughs> he just screenshotted yep. the cards. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's awesome. Use everything. 
Use everything at your disposal to <laughs> yeah. win. That's right. There's even there's this guy. So to even get in there, there's this guy that's juggling a yellow ball, and you have to like pick left or right. He was, was he was bullshit. going back. He was recording clips. Oh my god! And then oh, going yeah. back frame by frame to figure out which hand the wait, yellow wait. ball was in. Max, explain why? Because you, you do have Huber, to do it twelve you times have to in a row. Guess, you, you have to get it twelve times in a row. That's a little. And he's excessive. doing it fast, dude. Yeah, yeah come on. That's it's excessive. a little. It's a little excessive. Yeah. That's a little nonsensical. It's like, no, nah, I just want to. I want to see this, man. Come on, where's this casino? But at? The, the, the the thing about it, Damiani, is it's like. It's just instinctual to you. Like, you didn't even try to do it without it's doing insta that. cheese. Yeah, it's just immediately. That's yeah. what Damiani's doing. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, well, because I know what the outcome is going to be if you do it normally. You're going to be there for like an hour or two. It's like, is this really what you want to do with your time? You could be playing other games. Yeah, I could be in the casino right now doing the fun yeah. mini games, or I could be doing this thing, getting burned out, and be like, this game sucks. I'm done with it. Like... Sometimes you gotta read the room, game developers. Like, <laughs> yo, like, let us in. Let us into the casinos, man. Hopefully, Dragon Quest Twelve has uh, blackjack and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I remember, yeah, they would have, they have them. a lot of games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we touched on this uh, briefly, but we'll get a little more into it. Zach Wojnar wrote in, How are the difficulty modes in Super Mario RPG? Mm. Can I crank it up and really challenge myself, or is it always going to be delightfully breezy? So, uh, I like how they use the word breezy because that's the name of the easiest difficulty in the game. So, they added an easy difficulty for people who just want to get through the game and enjoy it and the story. Um, I don't even know, like, what it really did because I used it once on one of the the hidden, the extra bosses. Oh, you can swap. Because there's a puzzle battle. Well, anytime in a combat, you can swap. It, it goes back and forth. It doesn't lock you out of anything. Nice. Uh, but like those, as I said, those are more like puzzle bosses. So like that didn't really do much. So I'm like, oh, this isn't gonna really help me with that. Um, but there is no harder difficulty that's unlocked once you beat the mm -hmm. game. So I know people are hoping there was like a new game plus or new game option with like an even harder difficulty. Uh, so I would say this version is definitely a little bit on the easier side compared to the original Super Nintendo version. If you'd like to play it with like its intended difficulty, you need to get a hold of probably the Super Nintendo version. Because just the, the triple attacks alone and the chain combos, like the game was not designed with those originally in mind. So you can just use those to like get a huge leg up on a lot of fights. I don't remember, did they ever put that on Switch Online or is that only on like the virtual console and like SNES I Classic? I don't think it's on, I don't think it's on the SNES service. It's only on the Super Nintendo Classic. Huh. Damn you, yeah. Nintendo! I like the old version too. I, w I just wish it came with both. Yeah, ideally. I wish you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wish it was just packaged in there. Even, been if, awesome. even if you couldn't swap back and forth, if it was just yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been awesome. Nonetheless, though, Super Mario RPG is a fantastic video game. I recommend it highly yeah, to people, do. especially if like mm -hmm. this could be like a really good first RPG for you to get into. It sounds like yeah. if you're new to the genre. Oh yeah. I, I think too that like. It's really easy to like take this for granted as like oh a fun weird little niche RPG or yeah. whatever, but Square Soft type the the timing based attacks and that like action side of combat was such an out of the box mm -hmm. new feeling kind of a thing and like I can't say like a hundred percent it was the first one to do it or anything like that, but it was it was. It was them like really innovating and being like, okay, how do we make the uh, like an RPG fun and fit Mario and all of that, and that has gone on to continue to be influential even in 2023. Mm -hmm. People are making RPG systems with those kinds of mechanics, um, and and you know whether or not Mario RPG was the first to do it, it was definitely the the one that everybody noticed. Yeah. Yeah. That's what stood out for me when that game came out, definitely. Hell yeah, I can't wait to play it, but I don't know when I'll get to it. I bought it, though. Cataclysmic. Nice. That box art's clean, dude. Oh, yeah. Okay, next game. Huber, Yo. here we go. Another Like a Dragon game. <laughs> Fucking MCU over here. Yeah. Cranking them. <laughs> Cranking them out. Well, before we get into it, I'm just annoyed because... This one's coming out. It's like out now. Yeah. Then the sequel or the follow-up is like 
a few months away. Right. It's in this January, point. and then Ishin was this January, so that's three Yakuza games Jeez. in a one-year period. Yeah. Right. That is insane. It's a lot. Yeah. We like them, but that's I, a lot. I've loved this yeah. series since 05, and it's just like, uh, if, you know, it's the same problem with the MCU. It's just like, too much of something is too much, you know? So... Just, yeah, I, just... I think there's there's a couple of weird <laughs> caveats. One is that Ishin is in a weird spot because it's kind of a it's a remake. Yeah, but like we never got the original, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so I feel like probably like the hardcore yeah. Japanese audience like there, like there weren't as many people that were probably going to even play that because like yeah. oh yeah I played that back in the day that's cool, and then but this one is supposed yeah. to be shorter. I don't Ten know how far you've gotten into it. Total. That's Ten okay. Total. That makes it much yes. easier to swallow. Yeah. So it really is a side story. Yo. Ten hours, main storyline. That's completion. This is probably nice. like twenty or thirty. Yeah. 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 yeah I heard that with nuts. like with Yakuza games. Yeah. So, like completion. This is insane. But um, let's talk about yeah. Kazuma Kiryu is back. He's back. Even though we thought six was going to be the end. Thought six was going to be the end, and then uh, yeah, I think Ishin kind of like like. It's not Kazuma, but it, like same. Yeah. Character. I mean, it's the same character. So I like, didn't have that like oh he's back well, feeling you know yeah well because he wasn't <laughs> he came back at other points too. exactly <laughs> exactly so it's like he's he's back but he's never been gone <laughs> so it's like okay but uh i really like the premise of this game and i really like that the focus is on him that's super nice it it, it really like every scene is really about him and what he's going through and you know, the franchise name change to Like a Dragon just makes so much sense now because, like, the Yakuza is not what it used to be in this timeline. Like, it's right. really on the back foot. It's really, they're just, like, not a joke, but they have nowhere near as much power as they used yeah, to. Yeah, it's, like, not their era anymore. Yeah, yeah. So it's really fun to, like, they really hype up, and it's not... It's not over the top, but they really hype up my favorite shit, which is just like, yo, legend, legend, fucking dragon of Dojima, you oh, legend. Yeah. I feel like I've been hearing like, that for like every game. <laughs> yeah, but like this time, it like hits. It's, it's hard. Hitting. Okay. It's hitting. Okay. That he is just like this older, they think he's washed up, just yeah. like, yo, you're kind of pathetic. Like, Jeez. Yeah, because um, it's, it's hard. Like, I'll give you the basic premise. It's... I'm not, obviously not going to get into spoilers, but like to tell you the premise, kind of is like you know if you're not fully. Oh yeah, fully, yeah that's the way with these ongoing series. It is what it is. Yeah, so he's like in hiding. I'll, I'll, I'll try to be vague, but he's basically like working for this group that was like tied to the government, and basically they're blackmailing him. They're like, yo, we're gonna we're gonna hurt everyone you care about and love. You know, they really hold the orphanage over him oh. and his family. So oh, like, it really, it, it's doing a really good job of like hitting on the whole journey of like bits and pieces from each Yakuza game. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, dude, a little from that one. Oh, a little from that one is like really cool. Uh, but they're blackmailing him and he's kind of like their lap dog. Mm. And he is kind of in a pathetic state. And... You know, obviously, Yakuza games, all hell breaks loose, and he's got to, like, you know, clear, not clear his name, but, like, that style of, like, I'm going to go figure all this out. Mm -hmm. This huge, sprawling conspiracy and this huge plot, I need to go unravel it and figure it all out. Um, So, gameplay is pretty much the same uh, as the the other ones. The beat-em-up ones. The beat-em-up style. You have two fighting styles this time. You have the Yakuza style. Just like your classic brawler brute, mm-hmm. <laughs> but then you have this agent style, nice, which is really weird. It's like more fast, but you have like this fucking James Bond watch thing that can like shoot out like this <laughs> electrical whip to cool. like to like what? stun <laughs> enemies or like throw them across the arena. It's like really out of control. This thing, um, and then you can use it when you explore too to like. Grab things <laughs> that are like out oh, of reach. That's cool. Sick. Yeah. So, very, very similar to the old games, mm-hmm. format wise. Long, melodramatic, awesome cutscenes. A quicker pace, though, this time around. 
definitely not like 30, 40 minutes. It's, yeah. it's, it's a lot I mean, getting breezier. through it in 10 hours, it feels like, you know, for one of their stories, it's a lot. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, sub-stories, all that. You can explore. There's lockers and, and keys you can find. Is it Kamurocho again? No, it's uh, Yoko, Yokohama Hama and Osaka. And okay, then so a, old locations. We've yeah, been to. and then okay. there's a, a third zone, the castle, which uh, is like a hub area. Ooh. which is like a lot of mini games. Okay, super jolly, pocket racing. Uh, <gasps> nice. <laughs> Not again, dude. I can't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, the main because there's always a, a main mini game thing like the cabaret, or, right? Uh, the real estate, some way to earn cash, baseball, some hype ass shit that's always so good. And I really feel like. Yakuza is one of the best franchises ever that ties their entire game together so well. Mm -hmm. You have like the activity log where it's like, okay, buy everything from these stores, help everyone, and you'll get XP and get progress to this thing. Like everything you do gives you progress towards something. So there's this lady, I forget her name. It's like Akana or Awaka or something. I forget her name right now. But she's in Osaka, and she's, like, your contact lady, and she's basically all about, like, cleaning up the streets. So you become your friendly neighborhood Kazuma, going around, just helping the locals, like, like getting cats out of trees, feeding people that are hungry... Classic, you know, giving toilet paper to someone in the bathroom. He's like Spider Man now. <laughs> yeah, he's actually Spider Man. Yeah. The friendly neighborhood Cosmo. <laughs> and then, um, so you do those for her, and that levels her thing up. Ton, you could lose so many hours in this. Sounds day. like it. I'm already yeah. sweating. Yeah, it's out of, but a lot of the, so there's like people that you can help on the map. Those honestly take like anywhere from like, 20 seconds mm -hmm. to like a few minutes, but it's like, you know, hey, these guys are harassing me. You beat them up, you help them, you get some XP and cash. So she levels up. When you level her up, then you can buy more things from her. It unlocks more quests. She has like special quests that are a little more involved. So there's a lot of okay. stuff to kind of sink your teeth into there. And then, uh, you know, the classic arcade, mm -hmm. golfing, mm -hmm. billiards, darts, all that stuff. And then, of course, like I was just saying, how everything ties together so beautifully in these games. Some of her quests will be like, hey, play me in darts. And now you're playing this mini game and you're accomplishing multiple things. You're playing darts, which accomplishes the activity log. You're finishing this quest. So just like so much dopamine all the time. Everything you do matters. Um, Combat feels good. It's a little splashier this time around. It feels just a little lighter. Mm. You know, like uh, six, I loved so much because it felt just like heavier, dude. Yakuza or uh, Kazuma just had some like weight behind him. Just feels a little too it, fast it's for like, him. It's fast. It's good, but it also feels a little lighter. Like I'm not getting as much impact. Mm. Um, maybe the sound isn't as good too, or something. Just something. I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's still really good. Same as it's ever been. You know, heat actions, hype, <laughs> grabbing a scooter, bashing them, grabbing a freaking the cone. You know, the cone is one of the, my all time favorites because mm -hmm. you're just boom, 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 boom. Like, love the heat actions. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much where I'm at now. Solid entry. Story's really good so far because he is the focus. And it's just really fun because now that the Yakuza itself is, like, not what it used to be, the perspective of him has changed, too. Now he's, like, really from this golden era, and he is this legend. Like, you know, so many times the Yakuza, Yakuza would have these huge personalities still, and, like, he was kind of retired, but, like, still in it. Now it's like, oh, you're some Yakuza? Who cares? Like, you guys suck. Like, whatever. So just the perspective of everything and where he's at and how everyone is kind of viewing that is is fun and good. Yeah. Um, so with drag like a dra or sorry Yakuza Seven yeah. was kind of like a newer generation, I guess, mm -hmm. kind of a new thing. Mm -hmm. This seems to carry off or continue right after that kind of thing. 
takes place technically before, during, and after Seven, and okay. they promised, even before the game came out, they promised it's going to lead right into Infinite Wealth. When you beat this game, you can get an Infinite Wealth demo. That oh. has like some, oh. ex- some exclusive shit. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. I didn't know that. Yeah. I don't know if it's like a completely separate thing that won't be in the main game, mm-hmm. or if it's just like a slice of that. I don't know yet, mm-hmm. but there's something to do with, uh, with Infinite Wealth. So I guess with this game, it's just a smaller, scaled-down version of everything. Is there anything that's kind of annoying you about it, or does it seem fine for what it is? Yeah, I think it's 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 really good. Um, That's I think how we usually feel about these games. Is like, yeah, they're really good. Yeah, I feel like you know, not to draw comparisons, I always felt like. Song of Life was like Avengers Endgame, and Mm -hmm. now we're kind of like rebuilding again. Mm -hmm. You know, the stakes were so high in that. It was so impactful. It was so good. I love Song of Life. Um, So it feels like we're kind of like starting over again, but also this narrative is kind of like building on everything that's come before, but it might also be positioning him to be in a new role. Um, So yeah, nothing's really bothering me, but... I think because the formula, even even seven being turn based, it still had the formula. Right. So it yeah. always feels so similar when you're playing these games, and I think that's just like, there's a lot. It's just a lot of them. So like naturally, it's not gonna hit me as hard. You know, it loses a little bit of that special impact for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. totally get that. Yeah. I, I I do remember though, right? That in uh, in eight. When he's in your party, he basically breaks the whole or turn-based seven. thing. No, no, no. In no, that I think one coming up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, think yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, he yeah, just yeah, yeah. busts out of the turn-based thing and just starts beating people yeah, up. Yeah, so cool. That's really cool. So, <laughs> so cool. Uh, Garrett Holfish wrote in, Yakuza slash Like a Dragon becomes harder and harder to start with, so many entries to play to catch mm-hmm. up on the story. Any tips to get through them without skipping the quality side content? Oof. Ooh, uh, it's really hard because tough, yeah. Yeah. it's really, really hard because the side content is incredible in like Zero, Kiwami 1, Kiwami 2. The side content wasn't incredible until a little later on. So like if you grind through maybe like three or four and like three, four and five are insanely long games, like you know, longer than most Yakuza games. Maybe you could like breeze through those, but definitely with the newer ones like Zero, Kiwami, Kiwami 2, 6, it'd be hard for me to say to just crit path yeah. those. But there are a ton of games, um, so I totally understand it. But if you really need to skip some stuff, do maybe like skip some stuff in three or four. You know, it's it's still hard to kind of say that because like the side stuff is so sure. fun and you get so much context for the world and the characters so it's a little it's a little tricky but uh you know i know so yeah. many people and i've seen on social media so many like people just are, have been going through those on at their own pace they're going to keep cranking them out for a while but you know don't rush it because now because you can start with zero and kiwami and kiwami 2 like those are three very special games like, it doesn't even matter how many more there are, how many more you have to get through. Just try to focus on one at a time. Because starting with those three will take you a while, but really just soak them up because they're so, so great. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I started with zero because I came into it later. Yeah. It's Definitely. a great, it's in, like the, it, now it is the best starting point. Mm. Absolutely. Start there. Mm. Kwame one, Kwame two, then reevaluate, go from there, but just yeah. start there and try to just, not even focus on what's coming out. Yeah, they've done a nice job of making all the titles available mm-hmm. on modern platforms, yeah. which has been yeah. really great. Remasters even of yeah, the free and three, stuff. Yeah, four, five. Yeah. I re-upped them on Game Pass. And yeah, stuff too. Yeah, yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. So, yeah, obviously we recommend those games. They're yes. a lot of fun, but yes. there are a lot. But just take your time. Take dude. your time. Don't get burnt out. Yeah, because they are really great and they have really great characters and some really heartwarming stories. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah, I can't wait to play it. Yeah, 
And it's a quickie, which is nice. Yeah, I, I, yeah. But then they just said that Infinite Wealth is the longest ever. Yes. Yeah. The <laughs> quotes from that were like so confusing. Longest, There's, like uh, five was. I thought seven was pretty so long. So long. It seems long. Seven was so long. Like, holy seems, shit. Seems long. Yeah. Uh, question. Uh, I feel like Yakuza games or whatever, they don't have a great balance a lot of times with boss fights that just yeah. come out. Is that continuing? Same mm. as it's ever been. Or it's been. just okay. like. A destiny boss like bullet sponge same as it's ever been Brad you better have your toughness Z yeah that, I, that, you know? that caught me when I, I, I didn't get that far into mm -hmm. it but when I played zero it was like first boss is like oh yep I was supposed to buy a bunch of stuff yep <laughs> yeah. same exact thing you will you will absolutely shred trash mobs no problem you'll get to a boss and then it's like okay just try to hit this person that keeps blocking and dodging a bunch of times and then when they take me out like do you mm -hmm. use my you know, stamina. Yeah, <laughs> my yeah, my toughness. Z. I definitely remember seven having a huge spike on a certain bosses. Mm. So yeah. I was like, whoa. Yeah, for <laughs> sure, for sure. There's okay. a there's a weird. There like, are difficulties, I know. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. There's a weird uh, like dodge parry this time around, Brad. It's very generous. Okay. Uh, enemies will have like uh, they'll they'll glow red, and when they're about to do an insane attack, and if you dodge. Uh, you can just keep spamming dodge. It's very yeah. generous. Yeah. Um, he'll like parry it, and then you click a button, and you'll do like a really strong counterattack. Cool. So it kind of helps with like mm -hmm. the big bosses like that. They're, I feel like that was kind of an answer to like, okay, maybe don't just try to go all out and spam attacks. Mm -hmm. Try to kind of finesse it a little bit, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's still like a lot of brute force. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Sounds sick. Yeah. Can't wait to play more. Yeah. Okay, the next game I've been playing this over the past couple weeks is Persona 5 Tactica. Yeah. We talked about this a little oh, bit on the podcast nice. before, but now I can talk about the entire game. Oh, yeah, you did you finish? No, I haven't okay. finished it. <laughs> I'm probably like 65% way through. Okay. I've been I thought you were about to say 60 hours. No, 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 no. I think this game, I'm going to guess this game's probably like 30 something okay. if you just go through it. I'm sure if you try to do everything, okay. it'll be That's longer. Not bad. But uh, yeah, I actually think this game is really good, dude. I think the combat is super fun and much more tactical than I expected. Nice. Sick. My biggest gripe with the game is just kind of its story presentation, where a lot of it, a lot of it is just like visual novel style, with mm -hmm. like characters talking. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the stories yeah. don't like that. There are there's actual cutscenes in the game. There's some anime cutscenes going on, which are really cool. I really like seeing them, but a lot of it is just kind of. Character portrait, character portrait, like kind of mm. chatting back and forth, like whatever, it's fine. Yeah, no big deal. Also, Save some budget there. Yeah, you don't explore at all in this game. Like you're not walking around environments, interacting with stuff. You are just literally at your hub, and that's it. Like Persona games, you know, you're used to walking around and talking and getting to know citizens around wherever you're like that. None of that is yeah. here. None of that. Got this it. This game is mostly just focused on the combat and the story. Do we know uh, oh. the team that? They Who's this. doing this? Yeah, what they worked uh, on before. I'm not sure, Bloodworth. I don't know. Because I think all I know is the perf the P5 team is doing Metaphor. Right. That's their next game. So I have no idea who this is, but I think this team did a very good job about this game of really capturing that feel and that essence of Persona. Because, like, Damiani, here, where you guys play through the whole game, you know the vibe <laughs> Persona 5 gives you, the music. Mm -hmm. Still get a lot of that vibe going I on. I did too, here. by the way. What? I played through that whole game by the oh, way. Oh, you beat it? I didn't Persona know you beat 5, it. Yeah. Okay. No way. I didn't know you beat it. I didn't know that either, bro. Yeah. <laughs> everyone just learned that Blood that. beat that game. Yeah. <laughs> no one did knew you know that, that Damian? Yeah, we all just learned it at the same time. Yeah. I don't. Maybe he said it. I just forgot. But Chad, like, did you maybe know that? I didn't believe it. I did, no, I did not know <laughs> that. <laughs> Comment section. Did you know that? Didn't believe yeah. It. Oh, what? Uh, it <laughs> it says that P Studio did develop Tactics. Okay. So I don't know how big P Studio is. Okay. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know if they have like sub teams and stuff, but like, well, we know is they make the Persona games. Yeah, because like they're making, they made this game like Persona Six is in the works definitely, and so is Metaphor is coming out mm -hmm. next year, so they're busy. But um, yeah, this game takes place during Persona Five. Um, you have all the party members from Persona Five that I'm aware of. I think there's people later on that I don't want to say who, but I don't have them quite yet. So. If you've played Persona 5, you might be thinking exactly what I'm thinking kind of thing. Maybe. Some other characters, too. But, uh, yeah, the, the game follows the structure of 
like Persona 5 and so many other Persona games is like you are in this world like uh, you know how in Persona 5 the first world you go to is the castle for the PE teacher or whatever. Yeah. The first one you go into here is like a it looks like um, France or something like in the 1800s or something like that. Okay. That's the kind of vibe you got going on there. So it's really cool. I don't really want to talk about who the boss is and all that stuff there. I will say that uh, the boss fights are pretty cool because they have like really unique mechanics. Like this one boss fight they throw, during the boss fight, they're in like a huge machine going around, like running over stuff. You can see on the grid, obviously, when it's gonna come out, so you gotta mm. hide and uh, get away from all that stuff, but then they throw stuff out, let's say bombs or whatever, and you gotta like shoot the bombs back at them to make them vulnerable for stuff like that. They just have a lot of weird dynamics going on, yeah, there, which I really appreciate. Yeah, like Mario and Rabbids, right? Yeah, exactly. This game kind of yeah. reminds me of that, also Blood, but it, you know, Mario and Rabbids, you do walk around and explore and all that stuff. Right. Like, you're not doing any of that here. But uh, yeah, you got the yeah. whole cast. You got your Yusuke's, your Ryuji's. You got um, you know, you got the whole cast like that. Akechi. But uh, I think Akechi's in the game. Yes, Sick. I believe he is. Sick. So yeah, and we got some other characters from in there <laughs> also, but not playable. I think Akechi might be playable later. I have no idea. Dope. But um, you, everyone has their personas like they did in the games. You know, um, Ryuji has like Captain Kid and stuff like that. They all have that. However. Like in Persona 5, you as a main character, you're special because you could equip different personas and craft different personas. You can do that also in this game. You get personas during fights like that and cool. completing objectives. And like there's usually for a mission, it's like you have three objectives. It's like, hey, complete this without anyone dying or something. Complete it in a certain amount of turns. You'll get bonuses based on that. Nice. So you can get XP from that and rewards, which some rewards are personas themselves. You can also craft these and mix these personas together, not only can you equip them on your main character, but you can equip them on everybody. So everyone can have one extra persona equipped to them. So instead Ooh. of just your main character, yeah, not everyone has that option, which is really fun. Mm. You get a lot of personas nice. too, so um, I don't feel like I had to like grind for any like that. And there are some rewards for doing quests to get certain personas and stuff like that. Is there the Velvet Room? Yes, the Velvet Room. You do this in the Velvet Room. Got it, got it, got it. It's with a character. Oh, okay, that's cool. From the Velvet yeah. Room. Cool. Not Igor. Uh, Someone else. Mm. Igor Hive, oh. dude. Yeah, it's a certain no, thing. No, it's... Yeah, yeah Domiani so knows. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you can make... Uh, all... oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Do you have a question? Go, keep going, Brad. You might, you might get to it. I have a question, but, yeah, you might get to it. Just do it before I forget. Maybe I won't get to it. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you talk, You said, like, there's no, like, walking around or anything like that, like, in, mm -hmm. you know, Persona... But in combat, do you have any kind of like social link benefit where you're near a person you can do like you get like in an, a, a buff or something or they can do a special attack mm. like, you know, like fire. I think like fire. Right. right. Where you 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 you're, you bond with a person all of a sudden like you get buffs and you can do cool attacks. Do they have anything like so that in this game or no? I haven't seen anything in the sense of leveling up a social link, like doing activities with them, like I said, because it's. It's much more streamlined, the narrative. Like, you're not picking necessarily who you want to spend time with, stuff like that. Like, a lot of the Persona time management stuff is not here. Characters have different, like, buffs and stuff like that that you'll want to bring them in for certain things. Like, certain characters, depending on who you bring in, they will bring a stat to the table automatically. So, some characters, like your main character, who you don't have to use in every fight, by the way, you cannot ha use oh, okay. him. He has, oh, like, nice. plus damage to guns. Some other character, I think Makoto has like uh, plus melee damage or just more health in general. So you do have things like that. Like if you get into a counter where you know you're going to be shooting a lot or taking like range attacks, you might want to equip a party with more people that give you plus benefits to guns. Also, each character has a certain thing. If you don't use them on a turn, if they're there and you just don't have them do an action, they will get a passive buff to them. And these buffs do different things like uh, increasing their speed or something like that. So you want to keep that in mind also. Okay. But yeah, the gameplay is you're on the map. It's kind of like a grid, but you could freely move around it. Uh, and it's so if you move, you can see where you can move to and you can move around as much as you want. So if you move, it doesn't like just take away your oh, turn right. or whatever okay. like that. So you can plan That's accordingly. Like, rabbits, like yeah. if you want, you can move a character and it'll still be their turn. You can just move them, but then you can move another character if you want like that to set up certain things, like certain attacks, like... Cool. Certain attacks okay. are if you down an enemy, kind of like how you do in P5, you know, you make them vulnerable on the ground, they're open up to an attack, more damage. Uh, if you move 
your three party members around them, kind of like in a circle or a triangle, X, uh, or it'll do it'll open them up to an all-out attack. So it'll do like the attack that everyone does in P5, yeah, yeah. like that'll open them up to stuff like that. So you do want to keep your kind of formation in line. But also another thing is if you're moving, you have an ability where if someone sh- hits someone off a higher ground, and the enemy's falling, one of your party members could follow up, like shooting it while it's falling in the air like that if they're close to them. So you do want to think about, like, I'm going to move this guy here, so when I do this, they will fall over here. But you're like, I didn't use their turn yet, so I'll be able to do an extra follow-up like that. So a lot of you just kind of figuring out how to do that stuff. But what's nice about all these systems is there are optional side quests where you can talk. There's, like, a narrative wrapped around them. And people who do this get Ooh. a certain amount, like, um, of XP that you can use on your skill tree. Because everyone's got a skill tree. If you do these quests, you get currency for that skill tree. But what's cool about these is some of these, they give you some hard restrictions on how you got to get through this stuff. Like, one of them was kill all these enemies in one turn. And you're just like, so you got to really think about how am I going to do all of this? All these enemies... How am I going to maneuver everyone to get through this in one turn? And some of these took me like 30 minutes to figure out. Damn. Because there's like so many oh, variables wow. and environmental things. Like, you know, there's some stuff like cans or like barrels you could shoot for explosions. So you got to consider all that. Them. <laughs> yeah. And there was like one where I had to get to the en- other side of the map in one turn. So I had to like That's huh. figure out <laughs> That's how to fun. like. Because when you do the one more time thing, you got them off. It says it says one more time. You get another turn. Oh. So you got to figure out how to coordinate with everyone. Like for example, this uh, one was early uh, on. It was two people on higher ground in my party, and one in the middle, and I was having to navigate and get these guys down on the ground enough so that my character had enough turns to make it to the very end. Sick. That one took me a little while too, but it was really fun and really that's satisfying great. when I nailed it. Yeah, that's great. And it was completely optional. If you didn't want to do it, you can just skip it. But to me, the the XP benefit is totally worth it. Yeah. Uh, also, so when you're moving around the grid, you could take. You're gonna want to take cover a lot. So you're gonna want to lean up against walls. There's huge cover, like full cover, and there's half. If you're in half cover, you'll still take some damage. You get shot. It'll right, say like, yeah. resist though. But if you're in full cover, no damage. You're not gonna get hit by anything like that. Enemies can also do this too. So you want to be careful. Some people have persona abilities that might be better for this. Like uh, Morgana has like wind, so you can blast them kind of away so they can get out of that area then leave them more open to an attack like that. So that's something you want to keep in mind a lot. Uh, Also, uh, so if you get close to a guy, like a melee range, you'll hit them and they'll go flying a certain amount of spaces. So that'll also give you more opportunity to set up more chain attacks with all that stuff like that. You also have your guns, which are, depending on who you are, they can be more effective for certain characters. Like Haru and Ryuji's guns are really good because... She has a grenade launcher and he has a shotgun. Mm-hmm. So you can hit multiple people at one time. So if you got a bunch of guys grouped up, they can just go, yeah. just do a lot of damage. Literally. But like the main character, he has like a, just a really strong pistol, you know, so you can do a lot of just basic damage. So it's definitely a nice juggle. You don't have to worry about ammo or anything like that either. So you just, whatever is the most opportune attack. Uh, the levels have actually been really cool. Like obviously they introduced mechanics slowly on, but I've been impressed because. First, you start pretty basic, learning how to cover. They introduce all that. Then they're like, okay, here's high ground and how to deal with high ground, like getting advantage on guys like that. Then later on, in one of the other worlds, there is this room or this battlefield I was on. It was like a, um, like a Japanese castle, okay? So there's like sliding doors. Right. And as you're going through these rooms, the doors would slide open and shut randomly. So you'd have to position yourself to be like, okay, I'm going to wait here until this door opens like that. But if... The door opens at a bad time for me. When someone's out, they're going to get taken out. So I got to keep that in mind. Then later on, there was one where it's like, hey, you got to get this character to a specific point in a certain amount of turns. But to do that, your other party members are going to have to stand on switches at different spots throughout the level. Ah. So you have to like navigate a maze of uh, trying to get this one character to a certain spot and just being like, is this the right door? The switch to open this door? Just a lot of other elements besides necessarily worrying about taking down the guys. And if some things are like that optional, you do get bonus uh, like benefits for killing everyone often. So it's, uh, it's it, there's a lot of variety and options you can do, but you don't always have to do them if you don't want to. But if you want like the best XP and all that stuff, you do want to do that. You yeah. can also replay missions if you want money and stuff like that. Some stuff's pretty expensive, like guns. Grind it. Some of the guns are pretty expensive, and later on you can like make custom guns through the Velvet Room and all that stuff. So so far it's been really good. I really like the game. 
Yeah, I think the combat's surprisingly Yeah, good. I think like, the combat's really fun, actually. I'm having a really good time playing it. Some of the story stuff, I think, goes on a little bit too long, often some of the cutscenes, but, you know, it's a Persona game. There's a lot of story. That's just the way it is. Yeah. But the narrative's been nice. It's been slowly building, and I've been getting more and more invested as it's gone on, so. Hell yeah. Yeah, man. I think it's really cool. Like, if you like Persona 5 Universe, you like those characters. I know there's a ton of spinoff games already, but I haven't played all those, so I'm, but that's like, what I mean. I'm not it's burnt like, out yet. The way yet. you're talking about yeah. this gameplay, it's like, this is more than just like just a spinoff game. Mm-hmm. It's like this is a cool to me. It's a really strategy game. Yeah, it's a really that's just well like taking advantage of Persona. Exactly, 5 they understand yeah. Persona and the gameplay, like what makes Persona, and they have implemented it really well into a tactic setting. So I've been very impressed so far. Love it. I'll see how it wraps up in the end, but I've been having a damn good time playing this game. Is there any coffee? No, you don't have to. So there is SP kind of stuff like that. You know, you, it's your mana essentially. Uh, well, I can't remember the name. Uh, the girl who is kind of like the operator she, in five, you know, the yeah, Futaba. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, she can like chime in a, a, every now and then give you health and mana. Nice. And you, she has her own skill tree too that you can also upgrade to get like more from all that kind of stuff nice, like nice. that. But yeah, no, you're, I've, you're not drinking coffee. You see more of her because I feel like this fits her she's vibe there. Very Yeah, well. she's there. She's yeah. like with the team the whole time. You know, you don't play as her like right. you do in five. Or also in like in five, but she's there like with the group, yes, the whole time. So it just feels like the eye in the sky is just perfect for this kind of setting. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, and there is a new character that's like they get very. She's like one of the earliest characters. She is new to this game, like a brand new character. Nice. So you learn about why she's here Mm -hmm. and her kind of role in all this. So she's cool too. Yeah, but it's a a damn fine video game. Hell yeah! It's on Game Pass. If you have Game Pass, oh crap! You can play that real easy. Add it to the so list. I'd recommend checking this game out. 2023 don't miss. Go to every week. I know. Yeah. It's it's annoying. <laughs> yeah. It's annoyingly yeah. good. <laughs> okay, it's time for Sign Out! Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just a segment where we talk about something that's annoying us in the game industry. Game company? The game itself? Mm-hmm. Human being, perhaps? <laughs> Who knows? Do you boys have one this week? Anything that needs sorting? Sure. I mean, I got one. A small, a small little annoyance. You might have experienced this before, but uh, sh- sorted out MMOs that have you have to go kill a um, few mobs that are required for a quest. And there are a million fucking other players that are trying to do the same uh, thing. And like, you're just waiting there forever because they don't respawn for like minutes. What? Wait, are you saying awesome, Huber? Yeah, I love that. Were you, Classic. Were you no, fun? that sucks! An MMO, baby. Uh, Did this happen to you in 14? No! Damiani? So, for context, 14 you know what you this gotta week do, is doing... Hold on, let me finish. Sorry. Go ahead, Damian. They're doing their cloud server beta test. They're trying cloud servers out for the first time. Oh, sure. So North America. So they're treating it like a test like a, a test server. They're giving you all this money, all these boosts and shit. So, but the problem is there's only two test servers. Everyone's trying to get onto them. So like you get on, you don't you didn't want to log off. So you could to use the item to jump skip ahead. You have to log in, use it, it logs you out. You gotta log in. That, that, no, you're gonna be waiting forever. So people are just playing, like, let, let's just play. We're in, let's just play. Who gives a shit? Like, this is all being deleted in a week anyway. Like, who cares? So people start progressing, and you get to a quest where you have to kill these mobs in a forest, and there's only like five of them, and there's like a group of like hundreds of people just hundreds like, is trying to like, it's That's insane. insane. Yeah. I will say, though, uh, you know, just hopping back into WoW classic hardcore was incredible because it gave me one of my favorite feelings ever which is on archived on twitch if you want to watch it it's i have to kill some mobs and i go into a cave and it's the same exact thing damiani where it's like you got to kill some of these but there's only a limited amount before they respawn so i invite the people around me and we group up random strangers Hanging out, they're like, hey, nice to meet you. Like, smiley face. Oh, over here, I think. Okay. Like, the jolliest possible vibes <laughs> you could ever hope for. And I love that. And that's what's missing from, in my opinion, from so many yes. MMOs because it's just on autopilot now. It's like, bang, 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 go, 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 cure for this, go, cure for this, go. Whereas that, like, organic 
who's around me, let's group up and like zone in on this together mentality is just like it's in the past, it's the, gone. That w- when th- when this quest was relevant in like 2013, this <laughs> okay. that was the more the vibes. <laughs> right. That was more yeah, the vibes. Yeah. Like you used to like shout for like let's get into a Love party that. and stuff. But ten years later, yeah. after every like all the quality of life and everything, the game doesn't is not meant to be played that way anymore. Yeah. So no one is asking to party yeah. up. Like I did think about it, I'm like, yo, we can just but you can only party up with eight. But I'm like, yeah. hey, we can form parties and make this more organized, but no required communication and no one talks in this game anymore. Oh, so man. it's also part of that. So like since that's the way this game is gone, like it was just funny to see that. Um, and hundreds so of people both. is so insane. Little, yeah, like yeah. sort it out as in like, you know, maybe like, you know, you need to teach the, you know, your your player base to <laughs> maybe rely on those skills a little bit more. But also, I mean, it's 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 old, outdated. But for the future, please don't ever make any content like this again where <laughs> you, you have to fight over re- limited resources where you could be waiting there forever. And you, you, it's like, I got to do this to advance. What the hell, man? Like, this kind of sucks. Yeah. I mean, you didn't have to, but this, this was kind of like petty. Like this was, you know, for fun. no, I totally get that. I th- Huber, I think the mentality you're looking for, I think it, that works better in end games kind of stuff now, mm-hmm. where it's like yeah. a lot of it is just going. Th- like I know classic WoW, yeah. like the main thing of that game was just getting to level sixty and whatever. Yeah. But dude, when I played classic WoW, some of that was ugly, dude. <laughs> some of that shit in the Barrens, boy, woo, old game. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Very low number of mobs. Yeah, you get in a group with someone, maybe. It may not drop for everyone, yeah. so someone might get it and the others just don't. So then it's just like, yeah. okay, well that guy's done; he's out of here. So it's like, cool, I'm just down a person now. Yeah, yeah. I get There's that. benefits to both. I do like having the need to group up with people. I think that's really cool. But yeah, I love that. They gotta find a middle ground. Totally. Mm-hmm. Anything for you guys? Any sorted outs? Mm, I think the one thing that just kind of popped in my head now. Um, and it's like I don't, it's weird because like I don't feel like this is necessarily true for every game, but like I really, really, really would have uh, appreciated uh, post game chapter select for Alan Wake Two. I think yeah. I think that's I a think game that's where like because of the two protagonists mm-hmm. and all the like kind of points of no return and you only and get all three these, sa- save slots. You only get three save slots. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. it would just oh, be really okay. nice mm-hmm. to like. Oh, I really like that specific chapter. Or oh, I really would just want to go back to the you know kind of open Bright Falls and go find the last couple collectibles. Mm-hmm. You know, I've like got two trophies left, and like I might have a save file where I can go grab those two things. Yeah, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah I get that. it's totally. like just let me chapter select. When a game is so specifically broken into chapters. Yeah. Anyways, I know <laughs> that the. The layers of that makes it a little weird, but yeah. yeah. I think if maybe if you beat the game, then you kind of like yeah, that. Yeah, that'd yeah. be cool. But like even like um, like you know, Cocoon and Limbo kind of do those things too. Mm-hmm. Like they sure. they know you need to go back and grab a couple of hidden things. So like boop boop boop, there it yeah. is. That's the spot I want to be in. Um, yeah. I can see that coming down the line, Blood, because yeah. they are doing you know New Game Plus and stuff like that. So hopefully that'd be sweet. I would like that too. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything that's really bothered me. I got one. Oh, okay. <laughs> sort it out. Where's that Bloodborne remaster? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the Eternal sorted out. <laughs> yeah. The most uh, sorted out. All right. <laughs> What's going on there? Yeah. What's going where on? Where is it, dude? Yeah, where is it? Like, why? Where Just is it? why? Why? Like, why? What's happening? Tell me why. <laughs> Who's in charge of that? Yeah. Sony. Who's making the call? The, Sony is Who at call. Sony is why? making that call, though? Yeah, tell me why. Tell right. me why right now, Sony. Tell me why. Give me but wasn't, one it was, But it was under... Didn't the first one come out under Shoes Watch? Wasn't Shoe in charge back then? Of what? Of, of what? like Just Worldwide producing. Studios or whatever. Oh, yeah. producing it? Yeah, maybe. So, I don't know. What's going on there? <laughs> yeah, it's like they own the IP. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. PC version. Yeah, PC version. Sort it out. Just 60 frames at least, like yeah. on console at least. Like, come on, dude. Insane, 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 insane. Like, they remastered, like, no offense, Days Gone. Yeah. Like, we like Days Gone. <laughs> it's just Days like, Gone. Days Gone got a patch fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, All right. It's just wild. It's wild. It's just wild. Yeah, it's it's really just wild. wild. Mm-hmm. It's wild, yeah. I'm going to just latch on to that one. <laughs> yeah. Sort that out. Because I've been be. playing it. I'm just like, where, where, where is it? <laughs> yeah. Why? All right. Yeah, I, would just, I would just love to know why. Just why? Yeah. You know? What is the reason? What is the reason? <laughs> 
What is the damn reason? <laughs> uh, input input one wrote in. Sorted out RGG Studios insistence on keeping Kiryu involved in Like a Dragon story. There we go. Does yeah. a lot to devalue the ending of Yakuza 6 and the sacrifices he made in mm. order to ensure the safety of those around him. His appearance in Yakuza Like a Dragon was already pushing it a bit. But getting two new games with him as playable characters, guided in infinite wealth, seems like a major disservice to what was, in my opinion, a beautiful conclusion to Kiryu's story. It almost makes me wonder if they're not confident in the series' longevity without him, which seems unfounded considering Ichiban's immediate charm and infectious person uh, positivity. Yeah. Let the dragon rest and trust your new cast. Sort it out. I like that. Yeah, you know, because, like, even just playing it, you know, it's like, oh, he really is just one of the greatest video game characters of all time. Yeah, undoubtedly. But, yeah, I, again, I just, too much of, too much of something is just too much, you know? And sure. it definitely devalues certain aspects of the older games. I, I 100% get that and understand that. Yeah. And it's just scary because it also... Well, I, I mean, couldn't you have done something, you know, potentially where, like, he exists, yeah. like we acknowledge where he is, but he's just like an NPC, like running a corner store or something like that. Yeah, right? or or just like again, focus on the newer characters. Yeah. I mean, Majima is like almost as popular. Give him yeah. some games. Like, there would be ways to do it. And I I feel too, it's like it's hard to look at the series now and not have the vibe of like, okay, this is like. We're going the McDonald's route now. We're just like cranking these out year after year. I think the series has always been in that place. It just we had those delays on our That's side. That's true. We did yeah. have long delays for the the English cast or the English releases. Yeah, but they've had a lot of games. Yeah, because they sell. Which I mean, like I guess I don't blame them, but yeah, six games though, and it's the more Dead than Souls. six. There were there no, were from other. like oh five all the way to like. There were some gaps there. It was not three fucking games in one no, year, that's true. dude. It was that not. is insane. I think, there, I think there have been. That is insane. Because you got to count those remasters, too. Even if it's like one game every two years, that's manageable. Not three in a year. That's crazy. <laughs> that's more like Call of Duty. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. Um, do you think... Uh, my, uh, oh, two things. Uh, Majima is a good point, though. Do you think yeah. that like Majima could get like absolutely it's a ten-hour thing like this? Only yeah. a matter of time. Yeah, he had like that little thing in what was it, Kawami two or one mm -hmm. or whatever. They had like a little episode thing, and he was yep. obviously in zero. He was yeah. a character yeah. he plays. Uh, and then two, how much of this Kiryu sticking around do you think is about him versus about the gameplay combat style? I, I think it's about him because of his popularity mm -hmm. and because they're riding this train right now. It's it's so popular. This is one of the most popular franchises on the vi on the video game I, I was, earth. I was stunned like, when I, we we got those game awards nominations and yeah. it was Infinite Wealth was on the most exactly. anticipated. It was like, oh yeah. So dang. I think they're gonna ride Kazuma as long as the franchise is maintaining this level of hype and popularity. Yeah, because a lot of people just came in more recently. Yeah. So so you and they that. love they love Kiryu, so they're like, yeah, yeah. He's the mascot. He's their yeah, cash he's the cow. Just yeah, ride it. Yeah, yeah. It's weird because they haven't been afraid to experiment with different playable characters in the past. Exactly. Like we've had a lot of different playable characters. So yeah. There's a lot of great characters in that yeah. universe. Part of me, part of me though, even playing this one, you know, and I complain about like, oh, it's so much. Like, let him rest. Part of me is like, yo, playing as like old man Kazuma in like 25 <laughs> years, like they already call him old, but like gray, like old man Kazuma, that'd be sick. Yeah, we want to get the snake uh, yeah, levels. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Old back snake. Pain. Yeah, back yeah pain. I want the but, back pain. But yeah. yeah, there's there's some good examples. <laughs> there's some good examples out there. Some. Old man martial artist. Yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. All right. This is from my Latin lover. Sort it out. One of the top five gaming sins, in my opinion, is when an audio log forces you to sit there and listen to it. Mm. Oh, Why yeah. can't I web swing and listen to Mysterio's dev diaries? Please. 
do they do this on purpose mm-hmm. to tune you in, or is it a pain, or is it a pain to time logs with banter and upcoming set pieces? So he's asking, like, I guess, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like when you're yeah. going through the scene, yeah. they have like audio to go before you get there. Yeah, I can't think of an, an, a, a game, but I know sometimes you know your audio logs playing, and then you hit something, and a banter comes, and the audio log stops. Oh, at least let me do that. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. Those should play. Can you turn off? Like the podcast you stuff can, and radio can, in can. Spider-Man 2? Okay. Mm-hmm. Dude, I was getting yeah. like kind of annoyed with you some of it. Off. Yeah. Yeah. I did notice like in the calls though, like if you got interrupted by something else, it would like call back. Yeah. Like, people yeah. would call you back in Spider-Man 2. So they at least accounted for that. Which yeah, that's a God of War kind of thing. Yo, there, whoop. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I also love to, and they did it in one. I just love how like he changes the way he talks if he's standing there or if he's swinging. So yeah, insane. That's insane. That, that is so that insane. Is really yeah, insane. That is insane. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I think in general, like what they're saying is that technical hurdle is there. But like, yeah, when you add like there's a third element of audio that could pop in, mm-hmm. like I can, it's like, okay, yeah, this is just too much. Yeah. We can't have audio log layer and phone call layer and story beat layer. Like, yeah. I think if you're just doing audio log, like if you're listening to an audio log, it should mm-hmm. just prioritize that over anything else until it's finished. Right. Like queuing up or something, maybe. I right. don't know. I feel like they'll get better at it as just time goes on. Yeah. Love me some audio logs. Yeah. Top Bioshock. 10 audio logs. Bioshock. Arkham Asylum. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Good audio logs. Uh, now it's time for Keep It Up. The exact opposite. Sorry, out. Something that we're very pleased with. Keep it up. So what are we pleased with today? What are we feeling? I mean, right now I'm feeling Atlas. This game being good. Yeah. Uh, they've been on a pretty good roll. They got they just, good stuff coming up they next just year. Raised the um, reload, baby. Yeah, th- but they just raised the uh, salary yep. on their staff. Yep. Because yeah. of how good these games are doing. Yes, sir. Um, so yeah, I'm sure that there's more things there for them yeah. to improve. But it feels like they've just been like, not only been putting out good stuff, but like looking at what the international audience is saying about their games and what they like and don't like and you're like oh yeah we can we can work on that we can fix these things mm-hmm. yeah that's a good point and the reports are saying that persona 6 is going to be like pos- like probably a worldwide release no staggered release right. yeah you got to do worldwide nowadays yeah nowadays you have I mean, to that's there'll be a good you know milestone for them to hit that with yeah. persona 6 we just know? need them to like it, it, Lay off a bit on these like freaking restrictions <laughs> for videos. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they are so extreme uptight <laughs> on that stuff. <laughs> they are so uptight about that yeah. stuff. Uh, yeah, better duck and are. cover because I'm talking about Last of Us. Uh oh. Yo, keep it up. Ten dollars. Ten dollar upgrade path. Yeah, keep that up. <laughs> I think that's a totally fair price. For, Generous, fair for what they're giving yeah. you. We're gonna get into that more on the podcast, but yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Keep I think it up. Yeah. Good job. I like that. Uh, keep it up, Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth. You know, you just you're existing. <laughs> it looks fantastic to me. The Aerith picture. <laughs> yeah, Airship? just keep it up. There's oh, been a lot of info yeah, coming out that I haven't looked so at because I'm like, all right, let's just. I could wait a little. Yeah. You know, I don't need I to see. I don't need to read it. an yeah. interview. It's like I gr- I get it. I'm just like, right, I'm cool. Yeah. If there's a new trailer. I'll watch it. I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine. But yeah, game oh, yeah. fantastic. Slam dunk. Oh yeah. So many sort of uh, outs, but also a couple keep it ups. CD Projekt Red, boxed copy now of Cyberpunk. Ultimate Edition. And fa- the yeah. Ultimate Edition. I heard, though. Not the PC version has. No, the, uh, I think the PS5 version also doesn't have the DLC on the disc. On the disc. The Xbox version does, I believe. Xbox. Three discs on Xbox. Version. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Three discs. They should have done two discs like Sony's or like yeah. Square's doing. I mean. Yeah. I still respect it's it. It's more money. I respect it, but I wish it felt complete. Mm. Right, it's a half keep it. It, it like doesn't feel complete in box. You know what I mean? It's right. a keep it. Almost. almost. Yeah, it's like keep going. <laughs> yeah. It's a keep going. <laughs> You're almost there. You're almost there. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. Damiani, you got anything? Yo, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll just say keep it up to the Scott Pilgrim anime that just dropped oh. on Netflix. The, I mean, obviously you got some like good gaming nods in there. But what a way to uh, subvert e- expectations. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was known going in. I didn't pay attention, but I won't say anything else. But you should check it out. Hell of a voice cast. 
yeah, getting that like voice cast back. Um, I, I, I mean, this kind of gives something away a little bit, but like again, they've said this up front. It is a reevaluation of the original work. Like this adaptation is looking at the OG stuff through a different lens, and it's like sick. Um, I feel like that's it true of like to, every version of Scott Pilgrim, isn't it? Don't yeah. they always have well, their own take? A little this so the. This is being compared to like Final Fantasy VII Remake versus Final Fantasy VII. Like, I actually don't even agree. I've seen people throw it. It's more like Rebuild of Evangelion to OG Evangelion, which I think I agree with that. That's more uh, apt for what this, this, this comparison is. It is not what you expect, and I just don't want to say any more. Um, and it was a blast. And like the video, the title, see if you can name every title screen, what it's a nod to. Like, that, like just starting there, man. And like, all the other stuff they threw in there. It's not just like video games. It's like pop culture memes and shit from like the past 20 years that like get snuck in there. It's uh, It was fun. I think it was a... I really enjoyed it. I think they did a really good job with it. And uh, I would love to see more if they want to do more. I have no idea if they will. But yeah, very well done. Like very good. And the animation. Ooh, animation was so good. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, Chris Eyerly wrote in... Keep it up, Insomniac Games. Mm-hmm. Spider-Man 2 was a technical marvel, but was but what I was most impressed with was how Insomniac utilized the haptic feedback and adaptive triggers for PS5. Not since Astrobot have I felt this blown away by those features. Nice. Yeah, there have been little things here and there with the haptics. Yep, but, little things. Um, yeah, I think the, the one that's stood out to me most recently is still like GT7. Just oh like, my god, dude. Yeah. yeah. GT7 is Full awesome. Game changer. Yep. <sighs> um, but yeah, I'm definitely curious how it feels in Spider Man. I haven't got Spider Man yet. Yeah. Uh, Son of Sparta wrote in Keep it up. Keep it up to the Hoyoverse and Genshin Impact. The recent 4.2 Ooh. patch wrapped up the, Fort and, uh, the Fontaine storyline, which is probably the best storyline in the game thus far. Not only that, but they turned a character that was treated as a joke and mocked by the community into one of the bo- the best and most tragic characters in the entire game. So keep it up, Hoyoverse. Top three games I want to play that I'll never play. <laughs> yeah. it, I tried diving into uh, Hunger Star Rail, and I was like, I can't do another one of these games. Like, had to jump mm-hmm. off the train. <laughs> had to bail. I want to play Genshin. <laughs> Fuck. You can play it on PS5. Mm-hmm. That's, I don't, that's no time. There's no time. No you play it on your phone. There's no you time. You play it on your phone, you play on PC. There's no time for Genshin, unfortunately. <laughs> I just really want to play it. I really want to play it. I got to make time. I, I, I can't see a reality where I can make time for that game. Yeah, yeah you, you, you make time for Fortnite. That's so different. That That's different. like one or two. No, 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 I'm, no. I'm defending you. Oh, no, yeah, I'm defending yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Like because you you can't you yeah. can only play so many of these exactly. games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I, you chose Fortnite, and like yeah. people need to understand that. Like it's hard yeah. to jump into so many of these service games. Totally. Yeah. You're so right. Jason Wojnar wrote in, "Keep it up, first-person shooters that are throwbacks to the mid 2000s." Trepang 2 is total fear nostalgia, uh-huh. and Robocop Rogue Legacy reminds me of Cold Winter and its heavy feel and absurd violence. Yeah. Heck, even hardcore free-for-all and Rust reminds me of haphazard action in Time Splitter's multiplayer. Nice. Yeah, um, boomer shooters are thriving. Yeah. Uh, did, you, did you see my uh, post earlier today? Uh, Robocop is Nikon's uh, like best launch ever. Yeah, yeah, I saw that, dude. Yeah. It's done really well for them. Yeah. Definitely. Seems like a big step up from Terminator, from what I've seen, honestly. Yeah, so yeah. Payon, sure. I don't think Nacon was involved in Terminator. Um, oh, I thought they yeah. were. The the developer was. Oh, the developer, the developer. I don't think that it was the same okay, publisher, that's though. that's what it is. Um, yeah. And that stumbled out of the gate with, like, bugs and shit. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It. This seemed much more mm-hmm. yeah. good right, right out of the gate. Right out of the gate, it was. Yeah, like, yeah so that's a good partnership. It sounds like MGM's happy, too. Like, yeah. yeah. It sounds like, to me, like, people that really like the RoboCop movies will, like, really dig this game. Oh, yeah, it's perfect because Heck it's yeah. a sequel to RoboCop 2. Yeah. RoboCop yeah. 3 is not great. Yeah. yeah. So, well, and, like, Digital Foundry was geeking out with just the lighting and stuff in yeah. there, too. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Dude, a RoboCop yeah. game 2023, that's so yeah, cool, Yeah, really awesome. Like, Brad, you can, you're in, one of the first missions, you're in a you're skyscraper, and you can just, like, grab dudes and throw them out the window, oh. and they're just like, bah! I love that. Yeah, it's so That's like awesome. one of my favorite things to do in games. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Throw people off high things. <laughs> Through glass, Yeah, too. that's yeah. sick, it's dude. so awesome. Damn, dude. 
All right, we got some shout outs as always to some of our most generous patron supporters over there on patreon.com slash easy allies where you can also support us. We greatly appreciate it. Five dollars and up gets you access to this show early as well as the Easy Allies podcast. You can write into this show if you want your question read on here. Also the Easy Allies podcast. Bunch of other good stuff. Yeah, yeah. We would greatly appreciate it if you would check it us check us out over there. And as always, we got our shout out some of our more generous patrons, uh, put Patreon donors over there, in the Platinum Producer tier. We got Jabawabs, Elthanis, Greg the Dark Knight Kettering, and Miguel. Shout out. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Shout out. And quickly, we got a quick ad break coming up right now, so we'll see you in just a second. Hey everybody, Easy Allies is Heroes of Trine here. We are the heroes of Trine. We are the heroes of Trine. We are the heroes of Trine though. We're here to tell you that (laughs) Trine 5 is on sale. We tried our best. We tried our best. (laughs) And we succeeded. Trine, Trine again. (laughs) Yeah, we we did a series of streams. If you haven't seen those, check those out. Um, The game is a lot of fun. And it's on sale right now. It is on sale. Up to 25% off. Up to 25% off on a bunch of different stuff. Four players. Locally or online. Yeah. Both. And we you know tried I love both. that co-op vibe. And, and they both worked. work really well. Uh, the difficulty <laughs> system, there's an adaptive difficulty that changes mm-hmm. uh, puzzles mm-hmm. according to how many people are in your group, which yeah. is really smart. Like, how do you... Does that mean they had to make four versions of every I puzzle? I think so, which Sometimes is crazy. We tried five, dude. <laughs> Sometimes it felt like we just did some crazy stuff that was not supposed to happen, and we got through uh, the yeah, puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, was it, were we supposed to do that? It allows you to have ingenuity. <laughs> yes. Which I real. like. There's uh, some combat in there. It's not right, all yeah. puzzles. Some yeah. intense boss fights. <laughs> we leaned mostly on Huber for the combat. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was the brute. I was he the was brute. the brute. I was yeah. shooting arrows, and Gabby was throwing boxes or. <laughs> Uh, Actually, really good play. laser puzzles too, with like the the yeah, the light. Yes. The light. D- I mean, if that's not high praise, I, I don't know what is. Yeah. Yeah. Huber just praised laser, laser puzzles. Yeah. <laughs> His least favorite thing on the planet Earth, because the co-op vibe together. Yeah. You could play it on uh, PC, Xbox, Switch. There's cross-play between those three. Uh, it was developed by Frozen Byte, published by THQ Nordic. It's on sale right now. Trine Five, Clockwork Conspiracy. It's really, really, really good. Trying your best. Really cool characters. Really cute story. Beautiful music. <laughs> the settings are really nice. I don't know. It's a really nice game. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so anyway, thanks for sponsoring uh, Trine 5. And also, check it out. Check the game out. It's on sale. Check it out. We're the heroes of Trine! Yes, yes we're we are the heroes of Trine. All right. Time for our next game. Daniel Bloodworth, you've been playing a space for the unbound. Yeah. I don't even know what this is. Tell yeah. me about this. Yes. Yeah, this is a indie game came out earlier this year, and you know we're getting into award season, so I'm you know catching up on stuff. This has been like downloaded to my hard drive since like the beginning of the year, Classic. just waiting. Um, and uh, it's an Indonesian team. Oh, uh, and it's set in Indonesia, uh, and it's kind of it's wild because you know we were talking about Persona. We just played Alan Wake, and there's like. Bits of those themes that are sort of in there, you know, and and like, like, like diving into people's minds and like kind of how they see themselves, their inner worlds or whatever, but also like questioning like, what the heck is real that I'm playing right now? Like I, it, 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 the way it starts off like really puts those 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 questions to you because first off you see like this like really kind of out there story about like the space princess or whatever but then it like turns out it's like oh okay so you're playing as this this teenager who's talking with this um like younger kid who's like you know you've been like helping her like co-write a story and so like that's just her story or whatever but then like a series of events happen and then you know this kind of crazy moment happens and then you wake up and you're in school and then there's this other girl there who like says she's your girlfriend, and you're just like, well, was was that all a dream, the beginning of the game, or is this the, or am I, am I in a story now? Like I don't know Whoa. which of these things <laughs> is the actual reality. And like at the end, like beginning of every chapter, like you go, you see like a little bit like of his like history, his relationship with that other kid that they were writing the story together with. So I'm just like, I think I might be in the story now but i'm not sure i'm only like halfway through the game so i don't want to like you know lead too far into it right 
Um, make dudes writing you into the story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, in terms of the way the game plays, so it's like uh, side scrolling uh, and like walking through different areas, uh, and the graphics look kind of 16 bit ish, but also kind of like hand drawn anime. So like if you think about like what like those like full screen like cutscene moments on like an NES game like Ninja Gaiden or something. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Though like it's a good look. Um, yeah, so s- sort of similar to that, where it's like you get these big, like, detailed, like, moments of, like, portraits of characters, but then you go to, like, you know, walking around through a uh, school or the neighborhood or whatever. Uh, and it's more, like, narrative adventure kind of thing, so you're walking around, you're, you're trying to, like, talk to the right people and, like, find things to help people out. And, like, the f- one of the first things that you do with this this girl is she's, like, She's like model student or whatever, but they're supposed to like fill in these forms with the, you know, one of the counselors or whatever about like, oh, this is what you're going to do after you graduate. And it's like, oh, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to meet with that guy. I don't know what you're going to do. It's like, let's, so they take the form and they flip it over and they like, they make a bucket list. But you're giving me so much anxiety already. <laughs> oh, oh. God. It's not like a time-based thing. Or no, I just like mean the, 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 the story content. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, you're just, you're, you're, you're largely following along. Uh, but they make a bucket list of like all these things that they want to do. And, and this is, they sort of like your overall objectives for things that are going to happen in the game in a way. But like, they don't always happen like when you, like in order or like how you might expect them or whatever. Mm-hmm. So like one of the, like, uh, I think one of the things they write down is, is like, oh, you know, like we should get a pet or whatever. And then they like find this like uh, cat that gets ch- chased up a tree by a guy's dog. And like you kind of like, you know, help get the dog away and then... Uh, you like find like you go through town and like find things to, like make a little shelter for the cat, and then she puts you know a collar on the cat and like names him Admiral and stuff. Lots it's of cats Admiral. in this game. Very cat heavy game. Like you see stray cats everywhere. Dummy, you pet them. You pick a name for each one, and then every time you come by, you remember that name. Nice. Um, Damiani is immediately yeah, downloading. Yeah, he's nodding it. in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Just I will name the cart. cats. I will not name my Pokemon though. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you eventually uh, go to a, a movie together. Ooh, uh, and my you get interest. to pick which you get to pick which movie. So you can either nice. go with uh, Cyborg Raptor Returns, which is a hundred percent like just a like <laughs> take on Terminator. Nice. It's just like a bunch of like Terminator quotes and stuff. And great they're pander. Watching. Great pander. Uh, or you can go to the uh, the romance, which is like called Manahati or whatever. Nice. Uh, um, but uh, but then like you start to like uh, but yeah so w- one of the things that's what's uh, there's a couple of like supernatural kind of things that go on so one of them is um, space dive and this gets introduced in the prologue with the writer to where it's like you can like go into her head. And, like, do this stuff that's, like, in her inner world that's, like, causing her to have, like, writer's block. Like, just kind of, like, address the fears and things like that. Mm. Um, but then, This like, game's giving me anxiety, dude. <laughs> 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 um, but then there's, like, other things, like, later on where it's, like, uh, you can go into this girl's head and she's, like, putting, like, another character on trial... So it's wild because she's like a queen with like these guards in like this big like opulent like uh, like throne room, but it's like a court case kind of thing. But the the you know how like there's usually like a courtroom audience. Yeah. Instead of there being like a bunch of people in a courtroom, there's just like a line of geese in the background, and so every time that she <laughs> says something that like would get like the crowd's attention, they're just like, honk, 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 honk. excellent. And then she's yeah. like, order, order in the courtroom. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Sounds good. And then you have to like, you know, and then the person like gives testimony about themselves, and then like you have to like back out to the real world and find like evidence, like a Phoenix Wright game to like Ooh. sort of like refute that testimony. And it's like, no, 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 that's not who you really are. This hmm. is who you really are, you know, kind of thing. Hmm. And there's reasons for that. Um, and then. Also, there is um, this this girl, Raya. She has these weird, like, superpowers. 
that are not really explained. Eventually, she starts to talk to you about them, but it's like when you're going out to um, to like the movies and stuff, uh, she's like, "Yeah, like you, you know, buy me this or whatever." Like we we need tickets, and she's like, "Oh, like I don't I don't have any money. I spent it all on." lunch or whatever and she's like oh no no check your pocket and she's just like a little like I dream a genie kind of thing hmm. and you check your pocket and there's like oh I've got like five bucks in here you know and and so and like little things like that start happening and then like after the movie you end up in like cat wonderland and there's like all these cats and stuff there Damiani's playing it right <laughs> now actually <laughs> installing it's already, it's already installed I have I had it in, I have it installed on my hard drive like blood not as long as blood but, but then, I had it on there I meant to play it but then this crazy stuff happens where like this giant monster cat appears and then you back out into the real world and like there are now like the the, the movie theater lobby has been trashed because like the movie theater staff all believe they're cats now. That's and you have to like space dive into their heads and like essentially remove whatever blocks that make them think they're cats and like make them remember who they are again. Like that one of the people is just like covered up under a pile of popcorn. And so you like get a broom and sweep away all the popcorn. And it's like, okay, they have their identity back. That's funny. So it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. There's a lot of weird little things like that. A lot of, um, Finding the objects. There's like one point where like uh, she, she has she one of the bucket list things is like she has this like favorite kind of cake that she has, and so you have to go out and like get the ingredients for the cake. But like this bully that like has a crush on her and like wants to break you up, like he and his goons get in your way, and they like like better call his, his his dad is like the general store owner and so he just like goes and like takes all the ingredients off the shelf so you have to find other places to get the ingredients so you like do a quest to like help this guy with his chicken and so you can get his eggs and then you have like you like space dive into another guy's memory where like there's a cherry tree that doesn't give cherries anymore but in the past he would always like pick cherries with his brother and there's like a little cherry dropping mini game where you have to pick, the, grab the cherries, but not you know, like avoid the snakes falling out of the tree. That's fun. Um, so lots of little things like that. Uh, I sent you a photo of this uh, arcade. Yeah. That you yes, go into. I saw that. Time yeah. passes vibes. And oh, there's this, yeah. There's this old guy in there that's like playing the fighting games. Yeah. And these uh, these goons come and they're like they're looking for like collection money from the arcade owner. Dude, better call a Cosmo. <laughs> and so the old fighting game guy beats them out of the, the arcade. And then they come back with their boss. And he's like, all right, it's, now it's up to you. And so like, then, then that's like when you start to learn to fight. And it's just like, it's not like a real f fighting game input. It's just like quick time events. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you fight them off and then you can play the arcade game. And like one of your bucket list things is to like get the high score on that game. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, it gets quicker and quicker and longer inputs. Um, but then that becomes a kind of a regular thing is this, this fighting system that, yeah. you know, as different guys try to bully you or block your path or whatever. It's like, all right, now I know how to, to fight them dudes off. Nice. So lots of different elements. Um, mostly, like I said, kind of like a adventure style kind of thing, like Phoenix Wright or whatever. Um, but some interesting things going on with the story that, I'm curious where they're going to lead. Like one of the things, like with the the girl that you're helping to write, like she's got issues, like with you know her dad at home and stuff like that. And he's like, you know, you go in there to like help find something for her, and uh, you sneak into her house, um, and he's like banging on the door, and it's like, hey, why are you skipping school? I pay all good money for that school, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> So there's some some personal stuff Definitely. that it gets into for sure, uh, and then let's like yeah, there's some some low low cultural um, elements that you know like I don't know anything about Indonesia, so it's cool mm -hmm. for them to like introduce this kind of like traditional style of music, Hell and that's yeah. kind of you know one of the things is like oh, okay this this guy on the streets listening to cassette tape, your character like appreciates the music even though it's like you know like an older thing that like he doesn't know a lot about. And then that becomes an item that you use in like a space dive for another character so that you can get a ladder. And so, Take that. Take yeah, that. it's kind of it's kind of cool how it all's tying together so far. 
Sweet. Sounds cool. I looked at some pictures of this game. It looks really nice visually. Yeah. I do like the way it looks. Yeah, the descri- it's hard to describe the art style, but it's definitely got like a, a distinct look. Yeah. I think what you said about like kind of Ninja Gaiden kind of reminds me of it some th- a little bit. I think that's a pretty good description for it. But uh, yeah, sounds really cool, Blood. Love to hear it. Mm-hmm. Uh, next. Heber, you and Isla streamed this game, I believe. Oh. The entire game. Yeah. We were here, Expeditions, The Friendship. Yes. What the hell is this game? Check this out. This is a series, a co-op series. There's been a few of these now. And you work... At least four. Yeah, you work together to solve puzzles. This is a bite-sized one. This game is $4. One to three hours long. And... The basic premise of these games are that you're usually you usually split up and you see different things and you have to communicate with each other to solve puzzles. Isla and I just use Discord, but if you play normally you have like a walkie-talkie. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so like ksh, I see this blah 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 for streaming and for convenience we just use Discord, so you know, sure. It's not really cheating cuz we're just skipping like pressing the button whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but this one is so fun because it's short and sweet, and the premise is really cool. You come up to this abandoned amusement park, and it's like pirate-themed ride. You'd be obsessed mm-hmm. with the look and the vibe. And it's basically like you're riding this little boat through this little pirate ship, and you get off, and you do there, you do that three times. There's three core puzzles in the game. After you finish one, depending if you get gold, silver, or bronze rank on it, you get a little piece to your pirate ship. Mm. So it can look like really cool or also like like one of them we did, we got a bronze and it looked so bad. It was like <laughs> the front of the ship, like this eyeball sticking out. Yeah. Like it was so bad. We got a gold one, a bronze one, and a silver one on on that. I was having like uh, internet issues on the last mm. one. But the puzzles are so good. They're so good. There's just three of them. But to get gold on them, you really got to communicate. Hmm. And, like, you know, again, it's one to three hours. So, like, it'll take you a little while to get golds on them for sure. But they're just so solid. And they they use different parts of teamwork. So one of them is, like, you're seeing different things. You, you see, like, a little doll. And it corresponds with a symbol, and then you have to tell each other, like, "Oh, I see this one. It's what? What's the doll doing?" Yeah. You know? So you have to. Explain. Well, I saw a little bit, and like Isla was like just trying to describe, like, "There's a line with a dot yeah. in the middle." Of, like, what? I don't know what that is. Yeah. So that yeah. one is like time based. So it's like yeah. fast. You got to mm. communicate fast. The next one is like connecting shapes on the ground, but you're in two different rooms, and you can only take one out of three tiles each round. There's like 10 rounds, and you can only take one out of three, but if you take one, the player on the other side has to take that one as well. So Mm. you're like, oh, well, this one works a little better for me. This one works a little better for you. What should we do here? And then the last one is so fun. So fun. It's an obstacle course, Mm. and one player is at the top looking down, and they have to basically guide the player through uh-huh. the obstacle course and the person down there because you like go through this like poison gas they see things differently oh like I was like oh yeah I see oh. the I see the thing on the left and I'm like no no it's on the it's on the right like what are you talking about she's like yeah it's on the left like mm. I'm like no 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 don't go that way don't go left <laughs> <laughs> so just really strong puzzles and it's really cheap and it doesn't wear out its welcome because it's short and I love Damiani we were talking about the Mario vibe of like yo easy to get through but like if you want 100% this thing that's an optional challenge so I love that aspect nice of this game cool super fun sounds sick highly recommend co-op game for sure yeah Yeah. very cool Mm -hmm. yeah all right, our final game uh, is Blasphemous 2. I've oh. been playing a lot of this. Huber, you've played a lot of this. Uh, this is one of my favorite games of 2023. Yes, Blasphemous 2 nice. is very good. Very good. I would say a, a sequel that improves in many ways mm-hmm. compared to its original. Number one is right away is your arsenal. Yeah. So if you don't know Blasphemous, it's a very like dark, gritty, kind of inspired by like 
maybe like the Catholic scene in like Spain and stuff like yeah. that. The visual style and the music and all that, it's like that. But uh, the first game, all you had was like a sword. This time you have the option to pick from three weapons. You have like the two rapiers, there's like the blood sword thing, then there's Butcher also knife, basically. <laughs> this really heavy, uh, maybe you know it's called blood in the Catholic Church, they swing it around where it has the smoke coming out of it. I oh, like a censer? Yes, it kind of reminds me of that. It looks like that. But heavy. But like big. Yeah. It like swings out like a chain though too. Huh. So that's what it reminds me of, at Flail least. Flail vibes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so you had those weapons, and what's cool about each of these weapons is the they each add a different traversal mechanic to them. So, or a, uh, not necessarily traversal, a thing to help you with the level. So the bell, like the bell kind of thing, the huge thing you can smack a giant bell with, and you'll see like the sound waves go across the map, and there's certain platforms that will only come up when those sound waves go on. Oh, okay. Them. And you have a limited amount of time to obviously go through that. The like blood sword kind of thing. You if you get high enough, you can do a down stab that creates like fire, and you can get through some like wood obstacles like that. Got it. And the dual rapiers. There are certain mirrors throughout the game that you can stab, and you'll like teleport through them. Really dual fast. rapiers is such a funny concept. Yeah. Yes, it is. Poke, poke, poke. Poke, yeah, poke, poke, yeah. Poke. <laughs> Dabati, you played a little bit of this game too, didn't you? You use those? I think you did. Yeah. I, I found them to be pretty good to use. Yeah. Because um, generally I go with like the heavier weapons. I was yeah. like, nah, I'm going to go with like the smaller, faster. First. That's yeah. so funny. You did that. You did the flail first. I did the butcher knife. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that butcher <laughs> knife. Yeah. So yeah, obviously as you go through the game, they, the weapons themselves, you can level up. They have like their own skill tree. and you. Oh, okay. They're called Marks of Martyrdom, I believe. I love the economy of this, Brad, where you can either use those points to level up your weapon or you can give it to like the the yeah. wood, the wood yeah. carver as well. Which that is like choice. extra like trinket slots or something mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. yeah, you got to think about what you want to spend it on. So if you like want to focus on a weapon, you can totally do that. But if you want to scatter points around, you could totally do that. And also the levels like have, they're gated off. Like you need level two of this version of the weapon to unlock these skills and level three and you have to find them throughout the world. It's not necessarily just you gaining this <laughs> currency to unlock things. You have to find a higher tier of the weapon out in the world. So of course in encouraging all that exploration, all that good stuff. But um, the bosses in this game are really good too. Yeah. Like really good for Metroidvania games. Like some of them are pretty tough. Like obviously oh, yeah. Blast of Us isn't like a cakewalk kind of game. It's more in line with like Hollow Knight or something like that, like the difficulty you're gonna get in. One I thought thing, it'd be like insanely hard. I remember, yeah. I remember struggling a little more with the first one, Brad. What do you think? So one thing I noticed that they made in this game to make it a lot easier, I think, mm. is so in the first game, if you would fall on spikes, you're dead. Game it's yeah, that's dead. right. Now you mm. teleport back. You just lose some health now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, okay. Like, okay, well that's, yeah, that's gonna help helpful. a lot. Yeah, yeah. That's gonna help a lot with that kind of stuff. So they made a few smart adjustments like that. But um, I think the level design's been really good, really fun. Uh, secrets to get, additional things that you want to go out of your way for to get. Like, you want to explore. Like, I was going to, my last night, I was like, all right, I'm going to beat this game. I'm like, you're the end of the game, I'm going to beat this game. Then I just got sidetracked and just getting everything on the map. And I was like, well, I just, I probably could have beat it, but it was fun to just do everything and get yeah. all the unlocks. Like, I got, you got, you know, more health you could get, more mana you could get, like health flask, essentially. And you could level those up, too, to heal more. All that good stuff you want to get. There's also uh, currency you have, like that's like money more so, that you could buy trinkets with and other stuff like that. It's just basic currency. And in this game, when you die, you don't lose them. You just lose, like when you die in this game, you gain um, sin, I guess it's called. And it essentially right. takes away your mana bar slowly over time. Like mm. you just lose more, but you can pay to like confess your sins and it'll like give you all your Pretty mana. Pricey. Stuff. Yeah, it can get pricey if you wait yeah. a long time. It's not. It's never like, I can't afford this yeah, kind of yeah, thing. But yeah. it's sometimes just like, it's definitely been where I've been like, yeah, maybe I'll wait a little bit. Yeah. Sort of like that. Yeah. But what's cool about the weapons also is they each have their own like element kind of thing to it. So the big flail thing I've been using, it has like fire uh, moves you can do on it. You push like R1, you like light it on fire. But nice. when you're using this, it drains your mana slowly right. away. And uh, the sword, with he, like the blood sword, has a separate gauge that when you do damage, it builds up. And once it's full, you can like kind of unleash it to deal a lot more damage. You can eventually upgrade it to where it heals you a little bit when you're doing it, which is mm, really cool. Leech. And the rapiers, they, um, I, I didn't get super far into the tree, but what I saw is if 
by attacking enough on an enemy, like just using it enough attacks, it eventually would add like a lightning element to your rapiers. So okay, encouraging yeah. you to constantly hit with them, which is pretty sweet. All that good stuff. So uh, of shit for sure. Yeah. She'd be all about them. The story <laughs> to me, since I'm somewhat familiar with the original game, it's not as confusing to me this time around. <laughs> It's still confusing to an extent, <laughs> but I understand, like, when they're talking about, like, the miracle and what that is, like, yeah. I know what that is and stuff like that from playing the first game. Yeah. Like, you can play the first, you can play this without playing the first game, I guess, yeah, if you want. Yeah. It's totally fine. The first I game's the good. first one, I don't know what the hell is Yeah, going first on, one's but good, but this game is really sick. I like, it's got a lot of the classic traversal, you know, the double jump you get. You get an air dash, and they feel really good. They work really well. The levels are set up in a lot of ways. There are some platforming segments, but it's not like constant where you have to be platforming. It's not like Guacamelee, you know, where I was like, yeah, yeah, super yeah. in the zone, like getting through that was yeah. insane kind some of chicken some of the challenges. Shit. <laughs> there's like a couple tricky things, but it's not like overly ridiculous or anything like that. Uh, later on, there's this really cool zone you go to. It's um, you go in there and there's like a, there's fountains in this zone, and when you click on the fountains, it flips everything. Mm. So then, like, the map is upside down and you're upside down, but, like, where you're at in the map is reverse like that. So you got to unlock things as you're going through and switching back and forth. Just adds, like, cool little mechanics and just just that one area. It's just yeah. there. Huh. So it's been fantastic. I had – there are a few bugs I've had where hmm. – so with the big hammer thing, you're supposed to push R1 and it'll, like, activate the thing. For some reason, sometimes it just, like, locks up my character for a few seconds. Weird. So I like if I'd done it, I would get hit. It would just lock up for a little bit, and he just would stand there. So I've been very careful about how I activate it now. And sometimes the music just stopped. That happened to times. me too. Yeah, I had to like was reset that the game. Or no, what? I had to okay. reset the game. Then it came back. Yeah. So that's happened to me a couple times. Yeah. yeah. But then other than that, it's been pretty pretty damn good experience wise. Nice. But it's a really good game. So, if you like cool. Metrovanias, I highly recommend it. It's super cool. It's very violent, so if that's off-putting you to you in yeah. some ways, be yeah, warned. Yeah, it's a grody game. Yeah, it's a grody yeah. game for sure. Like even it's like it's like violent isn't even like necessarily fully descriptive of it. Everything it's just, is like, hideous in this yeah, game. Yeah, I'll say that. It's a freaky looking game. Yeah, even the lady that like upgrades your blood flasks, yeah. they're like peeling back her like her skin. skin on her arm. Yeah, and, and as stuff. you progress through the game yeah. blood, like it's more and more. Yeah. Like for me, she's just like <laughs> yeah, just, muscle yeah. and like her flesh is yeah, like, hey, that's insane. crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy, but it's it's awesome. It's a really, um, it's it really captures the sense of like grotesque, like horror, right? But also like some sort of beauty into it, yeah. Because like the music is so good, it's so and it's good. a lot of like Spanish guitar going on there, so, and so addicting. soothing but haunting at the same time. They've done a really good job of just like conveying this vibe. Mm. I really appreciate. But yeah, Blasphemous yeah. Two is a cool game. Don't oh, skip if you, if you can help it. So stoked, Red. Yes. Yeah, yes. it's really good. Yes. All right, it's time for some... You like the parry bread. Yeah, so the main weapon I use doesn't have a parry, which is a damn yeah, shame. Just the, uh, but it's the cool. Blood, the the parries are nice, though, because you can like yeah. upgrade them to do like cool counterattacks yeah, with them, yeah. but they do feel good. Like, and sometimes sound, like some of the yeah. big guys, when you parry them, it like, yeah. sends you flying back. You like, slide across the ground. It's really cool. <laughs> like on bosses a lot when you do that. It's really sick. Yeah, dude. All right, uh, it's time for some emails. If you want to write an email... Join us on patreon.com slash easy allies. Followers and up, you can write in this show on the Easy Allies podcast. Uh, first question is from Brandon K. Gann. Hello, everyone. With us being in what I consider to be the golden age of remakes at the moment, with this year alone having the stellar Dead Space, Resident Evil 4, and now Super Mario RPG, and Final Fantasy Rebirth just a few short months away, I was wondering, what, if anything, are you surprised hasn't been, hasn't been remade so far? To be clear, I'm not asking what you were uh, wanting to be remade, but rather a game or series that leaves you thinking, wait, why hasn't blank been done yet? Thanks for taking my submission. If you do, stay easy, fellow allies, and happy Thanksgiving. Dino Crisis. Dino oh, really? Crisis. Dino Crisis. Is, yeah, Dino Crisis is a weird case of I want this, and I'm also like, why haven't you done this? Why haven't they done that? I feel like dinos are universal. Yeah. You get people on board. Yeah. People love dinos. Yeah. Resident Evil is... One of the biggest franchises of all time. Capcom's killing it. Feel like a lot of, you know, some of those assets and, and tech and everything from Remake 2, Remake 3, Remake 4 could translate well over to Dino Crisis. So it wouldn't be like Square One building this game out. So 
Just just surprised. Yeah. And there's demand too. Like I see it on social media. People oh, are yeah. like, there's demand. Crisis, Dino Crisis, mm-hmm. yeah. Absolutely. For sure. What about you guys? Well, I was going to say it was originally going to be my um, keep it up because I f- and I forgot it. That's why I wanted Scott Pilgrim because it's the 25th anniversary of Ocarina of Time. So <laughs> I wanted to say keep it up to that, to that game. Oh, but wow. even though it did get a 3DS port, like, you know, a little bit of a visual facelift um, and some quality of life updates, all you, the games you listed at the beginning from uh, from Brandon's question – all these heavy hitters, some of the biggest games of all time, have gotten these great treatments. Zelda, like Ocarina of Time, still hasn't gotten that in my eyes. Like the it's it's still gate kept on 3DS, the uh, all, the other version, and we haven't gotten like this like beautiful console like upgrade remake style. And it's like one of the like most instrumental games of all time. It's like that, and probably like the original like grand Th- like grand theft auto 3 but they already said they're never going to go what they've done is all they're ever going to do for like gta 3 yeah. but like ocarina of time i still held out hope and it's like every anniversary i'm like yo so maybe next year they'll announce like uh ocarina of time like remake for switch too <laughs> maybe like nice visuals and stuff yeah, yeah. we'll see hmm. uh, yeah i feel like you could name like most of sony's first party ps3 library yeah <laughs> like it's insane how uncharted. many there are uh um yeah i mean uncharted has at least gotten something but we haven't gotten infamous we haven't yeah. gotten resistance we haven't gotten we like puppeteer remakes we're talking about yeah remakes. remaster remake yeah like remake infamous would be i mean i love infamous but i'd want like a new one i don't know remake infamous sure but or? like we just don't even have like a- anything yeah like f- for that French like we yeah. don't have any way to play that except for like a streaming service right? yeah yeah or yeah. an old ps3 console like, that's a huge factor yeah yeah so many of those yeah are just like even like there. all those like you know the ratchet and clank mm-hmm. games you know like they did that one that was tied in with the movie yeah you know they did the most recent one but like you know like totally going sort of back to its roots and like some of those like classic ps2 games totally and like really bring them up to their modern standards yeah um it's kind of kind of wild uh eco another one yeah yeah i was thinking of that i don't know if yeah. it's like a celebrated a shower of the colossus like obviously it's not as much love no it. but yeah but i don't know hmm uh i'm kind of surprised we haven't gotten like remakes of bethesda games like some of their old Elder Scrolls games, Morrowind remake, right, or, or maybe like a Fallout remake. Yeah, considering like that we got Skyrim like twenty five times. Yeah, I'm just kind of surprised. Why like, not the rest of them? Yeah, I know they take a while to get these games out because they're like crazy massive games. But I'm just kind of surprised. I feel like that'd be a prime candidate for a remake that people would get excited about. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of, kind of surprised and kind of now at the same time of like they haven't remade Banjo Kazooie or anything like that. If they like want to get yeah. their feet wet with that series or something like that, that'd be a great way to come back. Just remake the first one, or like remake both of them oh, at the yeah. same time yeah. or something. Right. Even if they're like just very faithful remakes or something. Like I know they have like the HD versions yeah. of them, but like you know, really high fidelity graphics, Banjo Kazooie. Just kind of surprised, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I think Xbox has some good potential for some of their games because they did like a Gears of War one. Like, update or remake, I'm not quite sure. But there was, like, a better version of one, I think. There was, like, a director's cut. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. But they never did, like, two or three. Yeah. Yeah. Seems kind of interesting. There was, like, an extra chapter. Yeah, there's something. Yeah. Something like that. I'm surprised they haven't done that yet. Yeah. But uh, we'll see. Who knows? Stoked Mafia got a remake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was nice. (laughs) That was sick. That was nice. That was sick. Uh, This next question is from Twiddle Sticks. Greetings, allies. Many E3s ago, I tended or I tended to Huber's gospel on the game that is Yakuza Zero. Nice. I've been hooked on the series plus Judgment, and I gotta say, I'm absolutely ecstatic, dudes. I forgot the about the Judgment games too. Pocket yep. so Circuit, dude. And on top of that, the Coliseum, bro. I was ecstatic when the clan building system. Or I was ecstatic when the clan building system. Don't want to spoil anything, but the fans of all the things RGG are going to be giddy. Sorry, 
even indulge in my teenage like fanboys and past Brad, but I won't, all I wanted to say is that I am thankful for Huber for introducing me to the series. And to whoever owns the PS Portal, I hope you are using the Huber diaper technique. <laughs> yeah, so let us know if you're using the Huber diaper technique. What a great conversation that was. That's awesome. I haven't been following it closely enough, but it sounds like there's like issues with Portal. It's it, to me, it sounds like just your internet connection mostly. But it sounds like you have to almost be like a networking expert to like get it to actually. Run I haven't. Correctly. I've heard the opposite. I've been hearing both, but I've heard uh, okay. some people are really good, some people bad. I don't know. Yeah, it just sounds like you have like somebody was saying like your PS5 needs to be plugged directly into your modem or something like that. Hmm. Like, Interesting. Do you mean like you should still be able to use a router? Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. But Ethernet for sure. Yeah. Yeah, because it's zero. Best. Yeah, Spot yeah it was a. Uh, it what, was a good time. What a gem! That was a genius game to make. Genius, one of the best business Calls, creative yeah. decisions like in franchise history. Mm. Seriously, yeah. unreal. Big unreal. time. Unreal. Really changed everything. Yeah. Shout big out. Time, good idea. Good grief! What a game. Just right. getting people money flying out. Yeah, too. <laughs> it was good stuff, man. Absolutely. This is from Soul Tab. Will Codename Kestrel be a start or a, be a start to Remedy Game Universe? So I guess will that game be a part of the Remedy Game Universe? Yeah, I guess that's that's weird. Is that the multiplayer one? I can't recall. That's the one with Tencent. So I don't think that's going to be connected. Okay. Uh, that's the one that they uh-huh. just re. They that's the multiplayer to, one, right? Yeah, they took yeah. back to the drawing board. Yeah, because they're There's not going to make a different multiplayer game that's control in the control universe, but this one's different. Oh, this yeah. one's different. I thought this that was the control universe. No. One. Oh my god. Yeah, okay. this is a different game. <laughs> okay, dude. <laughs> so oh, this is the one that was going to be live service, and then you're like, no, we're going to scrap that. It's not going to be free to pl- or it's not going to be free to play. It's going to be a you know retail game, uh, and, and it's still going to be focused on co op and stuff like that, but. It's going back to design phase. Yeah. I always worry about Remedy because they, they're guns for hire and they take on so many projects. And I worry about the quality, but it's like, you know, Element 2 is really good, so... Yeah. Yeah, it's, we'll see how it plays out, but it does feel like we just know more than we usually do. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we like, sure do. These these things that are seem like what we're worried about is like, oh, no, there's just like a couple of people over there like yeah. figuring out what the design is and... You know, the yeah, like with this, it's like, yeah, the people that were gonna work on this, uh, we moved them over to yeah other projects mm-hmm. because we gotta work on it again. Yeah. Okay, our final question is from James Davy. Hey, allies, do you think remakes should be standard in this day and age, seeing as plenty of them have flooded into existence these past few years? Although they're really nice to have, I get the sense they exist to uh, massage our desires for nostalgia more than anything else. We should be clamoring for new IP rather than spit shines of games we've already played. Technology makes these games look and play better, but they aren't imaginative, nor do they take risks to be more exciting. They trade excitement in for faithfulness. That's uh, a case by case. Yeah, that is an extreme yeah. case by case basis, James. Like, you, can't, you can't really say that for... Uh, yeah, I want like, you to look at the Final Fantasy <laughs> VII remake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can't say that for exactly. Resident Evil 4. Resident can't say that for Resident Evil 4. 3 and yeah, 4. no. A lot of games, yeah. remakes are very different. Yes, there yeah. are very faithful remakes, absolutely. Yeah. Demon's I, Souls. Yeah, and I understand like people getting tired of remakes or whatever, but it's like, dude, we're still getting new IPs often. Yeah. Often still coming out. Yeah. And we're getting sequels. Like We get sequels for a lot of games, I would say, But now. It's, always, it's always something to be scared about. You can't live your life in fear, though, you know? But, you know, especially with movies now where people are like, yo, we're just going to focus on... Sequels because that's what people like. Like mm-hmm. games now more expensive than they've ever been to make. It is a risk doing a brand new IP. Look at Immortals of Avium, that came out. Yeah, yeah, that and yeah. crashed and burned. Both crashed had and burned. Issues, yeah. Even Days Gone, like, didn't do. I think it well. eventually did. I think it eventually did, yeah. but it, yes, it had a rough start. It had a rough yeah. start. Yeah. Um. Whereas, you know, sequels come out, and it's like, yo, highest grossing sequel of all time, mm-hmm. highest in the franchise of all time, it already has that established yeah. That's what was so base. disheartening about um, 505 Games' parent company last week, laying off 30% of their people, mm-hmm. and saying, it's like, hey, 
we're going to back away from doing new IP and we're just going to focus on sequels yeah. and known franchises and yeah. like but like you guys like you you've done some pretty high level like new IP mm-hmm. like I don't know what's not working out for you right now but it's yeah. a little weird yeah it's the indie space, crushing it with new IPs. And I love how indies, too, they usually have, like, it always seems like there's always, like, one sequel. Guacamelee 1 and 2. Oh, Blasphemous sure. 1 and 2. Just, like, yeah, but when you're, you like, give it one more. Darkest Dungeon 1 and 2. Yeah. Rogue Legacy 1 and 2. It's yeah, like, like, they did this, the second <laughs> Ori, and now they're working on something entirely different, right? Yeah. Um, or, yeah, Ori 1 and 2. Yeah, I think that's, that partly comes down to... You know, depending on, you know, some like Ori, they teamed up, right? They're staffed mm-hmm, up. Mm-hmm. But like some of these things, like Axiom Verge basically being Thomas Happ. Yeah. You Axiom know, Verge like, 1 and 2. It's like but that, I mean, it's like duo. he hasn't had time to make a sequel. Like, you know, it's like whatever he's working on, whether it's a sequel to Axiom Verge or something different, like, it, yeah. you know, it'll probably be another three years before we see that. Yeah. And it's always tricky too because it's like. A sequel is a tangible thing you can think about. I want another Resident Evil with Chris and right. Jill and Barry, blah, 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 and they're fighting, you know, monsters on an island, blah, whatever, whatever. New IP I, doesn't exist. Right. It, it's, it has to come out of thin air to become a big thing. Well, it so it's easier the- for fans and it's easier for, like, social media and everything to just be like, oh, I want another Dino Crisis. I want another Turok because it's a known quantity. Yeah. Because you can think about it and dream about it. Whereas an IP is just like a completely blank slate. Yeah. Well, especially when you get to like the multiplayer side of things too, right? It's Mm -hmm. like you get new IP on the multiplayer side and it's like, well, (laughs) real big risk there. Yeah. Yeah. There's like all these things that like have come out and then just get dropped mm-hmm. in ten yeah. months, eleven months. I think of I think of just this year with Immortals and Forspoken are two yeah. underperformed. Are there any other like huge? Well, I mean, Callisto is the other one. Callisto other huge as one. well. Yeah. Yep. Later last year, but yeah. Yeah, I'd say a lot of those yeah. games had problems for sure outside of it being a new IP. Absolutely. Yeah, Not but I don't games. think I don't think Immortals really has problems. I it's don't like think it's not a, like it was average. It's not. I don't think it was good enough for where it was coming out against. Yeah, sure. Bad timing. Bad timing. And it was. I, I beat that game. It was just good. It yeah, was just swimming for me. Right. Yeah. Uh, tough. Damiani, what do you think, man? Uh, I have a, 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 the benefit of seeing chat. Uh, uh, Redfall was not mentioned either. Redfall. Uh, mm. right. Redfall. Yeah. Jeez. But also problems like you. Were, yeah. yeah. Like that, that game just had like. Yeah. People trouble. wanted to like Redfall. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. We <did>. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everyone <laughs> wanted to, to like that game, and it just you know didn't happen for them, and you know that's just like the yeah. sad case for it. Hey, um, Deathloop new IP yeah, that did I, really well. That's cool. And yeah, Control, they're, they're, even if you look at it that way. Oh, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It absolutely did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Control like, yeah. turned Remini's yeah. trajectory around. Yeah. Yeah, we, we definitely have ones. I mean, the biggest one, yeah. uh, like, I mean, I would have mentioned it before I even saw chat say it, was uh, Hollow Knight. We've all been waiting oh. for Silk Song for how long? <laughs> and it's like... Game Awards. Yeah. Game and Awards. I, I could see that being, like, the end. It's like, well, you get Silk Song, and, like, we're yeah. never going to get another Hollow Knight. Like, that, to me... I'm thrilled we're even given, getting a sequel whatsoever. So mm-hmm. sometimes even getting like the follow up is not necessarily a, a, a thing. Like Vampire Survivors, I never expect to see a sequel to that. <laughs> They'll just Maybe. keep doing like updates, and that will be, be one it. more. I, 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 guess, I really like, think indies, they just keep doing indie updates to that game. Do, they like to do too. I feel like. I mean, you're right. I mean, you give some good examples. I don't know in the grand scheme of every indie if statistically there are yeah, more. Yeah. Games that get two or fewer that get like one, like Death's yeah. Door. We're getting like a Death's Door sequel, oh, like you know that. Hope that's, so. you know, yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, that, that was yeah, actually can, for everyone. You can name. You can name others for that sure, don't sure. have a follow up. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually what's interesting about uh, Supergiant. Um, you know, with Hades two being announced oh, because like, oh, I forgot about until Hades now mm-hmm. they just always pivoted to the new yeah. IP, new IP, new IP, totally. and like oh, yeah. Hades two. Yeah. <laughs> like okay, good call. Yeah. Oh, man. And I mean, if you want to get technical, you could say, you know, Elden Ring, new IP. New IP. Yeah. It's technically a new IP. I mean, IP. it is. Yeah. It did a huge, yeah. huge difference. Yeah. yeah. And that was like game of the year last year. So there's some there. I understand like seeing sequels and all that stuff too, but there's 
there's some yeah. good stuff coming out. It would be nice to see, like I always, the one of the biggest examples of, of I, I see that fans want a new IP from his Naughty Dog, you know? Me. One of, yeah, one of these huge yes. studios that just has a huge budget mm-hmm. that just shoots for a new IP. Yeah, that would Yeah, because, like, I like The Last of Us, but, like, the last <coughs> game they did that was not was The Last of Us was, like, in 20... What was the Uncharted sequel or uh, Lost Legacy or yeah, whatever? 2016 like, right. or something like that, 17, like there, that. Yeah. It's been a while, you know? <laughs> yeah, and yeah. we've gotten, like, part one. Part two, now part two remastered. Yeah. So it's like I understand that I want I want to see what else they can do, you know? Yeah. I like the last of us a lot, but I would love to see what else they can do. Yeah. But uh sure. yeah. Yeah, and if totally if you're looking for weird ideas and creative stuff like that a lot, indie space has a yeah, lot of that stuff. It really mm-hmm. is, yeah. Absolutely. Thirsty suitors. Yes, <laughs> thirsty suitors. <laughs> Check that game out. Dredge. Dredge, that's right. Yes. Got addicted to that the other night. <laughs> <laughs> I did just yeah. You just can't stop fishing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You well, just can't yeah. Stop. I think it's the thing. It's oh, let me like, just drop this off. Oh, one more. Oh, let me just drop this off. It's one of those things where <laughs> the limitations create such an indi- addictive loop. It's such an addictive because loop. Top, ten, top ten loops. Because <laughs> you have to come back to dock. Yeah. And because you have to come back to dock, then it's like, oh well, I want to go back out yep. and yep. finish what I was doing, and then you go a little bit further, and it's like, oh, I got to go back to dock, and then <laughs> it's just this, yeah. Got to sell those fish. Yeah, dude. Oh. All right, that is going to do it for this episode of Frame Trap. Thank you, everybody, for listening and watching. We greatly appreciate it. We will see you guys uh, pretty soon. Yeah. Not next week, but the week after that, after post-Thanksgiving episode. It's going to be jolly. Getting into the holiday season, baby. Time to grind that backlog. Yeah, the winter break. And grind that double XP. The winter break, dude. The best time in gaming. (laughs) All right. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.